Daniel's a fucking idiot. Welcome. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> he promised us an opening. I did no, promise. Really five seconds opening. ago, Sorry. I went, I've got an opening. I, I no, th- but, no, it's important to contextualize when that happened. Because it's after Daniel went, oh my God, I don't have my microphone. And then wandered around his house for 10 straight minutes. Oh, he'd come back to his desk and find it in front of him, plugged in where he left it. And then proceeded I, to go, I've got a really good opening. And then immediately forgot about three seconds later. And here we are. I'll be honest. I genuinely think within the next two hours, I'm going to have a proper full on mental breakdown. And I'd like to discuss that. Oh. I think that's going to be a fun, you know, that's a fun podcasty thing when, you know, I'm at the end of my mental tether. And is I this, is like, this just heat? No, I've got air conditioning, mate. I'm fine. I'm fucking light no, for fucking luxury. You'll hear my dog's whinge in the background because they're trapped in here with me. Because this is the only... Trapped. They're, just, they're trapped. They're literally... The door is shut and locked and barred and Lilith is pacing and going, why? And I'm like, because you'll melt. You're a fucking black dog. I took her out for a walk the other day and she just burst into flames. It was horrific. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's a true story. Well, I can't remember what I was saying. I'm really not here today. But I'm Metal here break today. Down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I've got two hours. I think we normally do about two hours of this. So let's see if in two hours I will have a proper full or better breakdown. Or not. I mean, so if so, at least we've kind of got it on tape, which will be useful for, yeah. like, you know, the mental health services and or police, whichever we need. Oh, yeah, no, well, you've just, got... normally it's just as, it's just uh, sad times. You've got this therapy now. You've got your normal therapy later in the week. You know, you'd be great, mate. This is, ther- is this therapy? Uh, well, uh, well, I, I think mean, we're a kind of therapy, therapy so far. Yes. I, will, I will point out that this does lead, the way we're recording it today, does lead directly into my therapy session. I'm going to literally hang up this and then begin therapy. I mean, is it kind of I in mean, the same way that, like, Sisyphus did boulder therapy? Oh, here he fucking goes. Straight he goes. in. Fuck me. Where How are we? we're fucking Four what? minutes. We're, not, we're, we're four minutes into the recording, but we, we haven't... Okay, been... I want to be clear. Jesus Sisyphus Christ is not God. classics anymore. Sisyphus is just a common day-to-day idiom. You know a Sisyphean task means a pointless hard task that cannot be completed. Where it you've is got just to fuck your mum. It's not even classics anymore. It's the one we got to fuck your mum, right? you got to, like, do it and fuck your mum. That's Oedipal. Uh, Sisyphean is no, guy who has no, to get bolder no. to, to Cliff. That's the merc with a mouth. Oh, no, that's Deadpool. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> one, one tick down, one tick down. Just the mental health, he just... It's like a kaplunk. Yeah, it and there's, like, three like sticks left. And I'm just like, this is going to go wrong. And I'm excited. It's fun. It's fun to know. I like a good kaplunk. I've seen you do a good kaplunk a few times. It's always a hoot. <laughs> you been. know? And it's speaking good. of right. complete mental breakdowns... Warner Brothers! I was about to say Square <laughs> Enix, but all right. Oh, I remember the intro! <laughs> oh, here he is! Fucking hell! Wait, okay, everyone just pretend you haven't heard the last five minutes and pretend what you're about to hear is the opening. All right, go! Wow, every... <laughs> It's gone. No, I was going to... I didn't... Yeah, yeah. I was going to be like, Hi, everybody. Welcome to a podcast. Last time, we tried to get cancelled. And then I was going to tie that into Batgirl getting cancelled, but I can't remember now how, how now. But it was going to be a... Uh, turns out all we had to do was spend 70 million on it. And then Warner Bros. were just throwing us away. Matt, do we actually still work for Warner Bros.? No, we haven't oh. been involved with Warner Brothers for about three years. Oh, okay. Never mind. They... 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 They did fact. They did. They did just cancel the contract, which, if anything, is thematically appropriate. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, first it was us, and then it was Batgirl. Like we were the. Should, should give a minor bit, of, just a just a teeny weeny bit of context there. Channel was Machinima. Machinima got bought by a, another company, Full Screen. Then Full Screen got bought by Warner Brothers. So technically, we we were partnered with Warner Brothers, and then Warner Brothers fired us. Does that mean you two are kind like, of uh, part of the DCEU? Kind of. Am I Shark Week? Yes, you're Shark Week. I love the stunned silence after everything I'm saying. It's feeling, well, no. it's feeling really good. Because it's owned by Discovery, thing. which is now owned by Warner and something else. Warner Brothers Discovery, they're emerged. They merged. Why? Why would you just... Disco- mm. why, why is HBO Max going to be fucking shut down before it even made it to the U fucking K? Did you, see what they, did you see what happened with CNN Plus or whatever the fuck it was? Yeah, it was the same guy. Yeah, but CNN Plus was around for a week. Yeah, it was the same guy. <laughs> it's the guy who's just taken over Warner. It's the same guy. Can I point out as well? Right. Um, I imagine John's seen something like this as well. But Warner Brothers years ago, I'm assuming they still do it. But 
after the whole Shadow of Mordor incident with like the disclosure of sponsorships, they became really, really overbearing with it. And they were like, oh, if you want any code, you have to sign this really long contract that basically, but one of the sections in it was, you have to disclose your relationship with Warner Brothers in any context that re- relates to Warner Brothers. And I contacted them and went, but yeah, but we're partnered with Warner Brothers technically. So isn't, doesn't, According to this contract, we'd have to say that after every sentence yeah. we ever say. <laughs> and they were like, oh, we don't know. And also this contract was like, oh, you can't say anything bad about like Warner Brothers movies. And I'm like, what? This, that was really uh, overbearing. Well, that was hideous because Warner Bros. have made some fucking shit movies. In mm. so, imagine if I couldn't slag off Space Jam 2. But That's it. We never signed it. We never and, signed um, it. And I've know. never played either of the Shadow of Mordor games. What are they called? Are they both called Shadow of Mordor 1 and 2? Or is there something else? I think it's something Shadow else. Shadow of War, I think, was the second one. Yeah, Shadow, they're, they're Shadow they're of Wardor. Name. Shadow of Wardor. <laughs> yeah. And they, they, they did the Lego games and they did the... Lego games the, were pretty the, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were fun. Yeah. This Star Wars was all right. I thought it was going to be better, but I got kind of bored with it. I would like with a, you though, doesn't it? I would like a challenge with my games, just a little bit, just give me a difficult. Sorry, setting. Daniel's do, do, Daniel's doing this now. He's fucking. He's he's like he's gotten good at Elden Ring. He's like oh, all these pissy games for pissy little babies. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't like I don't like Kirby because it's a pissy little game for little babies and it's not challenging because I'm a gamer and he slams his fucking monster energy down the table and then like fucking spats on a you know female streamer's face without her consent because that's what gamers do. Gamers are not allowed to hang out with uh, female streamers. That's a uh, classic ninja when he's like, oh, I can't <laughs> post stream with women because my wife gets annoyed. Braless, not asshole. And I, he's a bit of a cunt, isn't he? Did Let's you, be did honest. You see, did you see Drew Gooden's video? I did. I love Drew Gooden. Oh. Wait, what's this? Okay, so Ninja. Right, so uh, Ninja did a masterclass. Yeah. On how to be a streamer. Yes, it was. Yes. Was this a paid course? Was this just a big yes. rift? Paid Paid course. So Drew Gooden uh, did a video where he took it very seriously (laughs) for weeks. He he went full hog and he showed all the scamminess of it. Half of it is him just going dye your hair blue. (laughs) It really is. And then there's a section where he's like, this is how you ban someone and then doesn't show the screen. (laughs) (laughs) You just click it and ban him. He's like, that's how you do it and you don't see the screen. I, I bought Masterclass once and I went through like, Stuff like Aaron Sorkin's one and Penn and Teller's one. Just stuff I thought would be really interesting to see people talking about their craft. Um, Because that that was a fun... When it first started, that was like a really fun thing to do. Loads of directors, loads of writers. I watched as much shit on there. I I probably wouldn't have watched Ninja's one. In the... It it probably wouldn't appear... Who's it for? Like, well, the problem is you've got to... To have a really good, like, course like that, you've got to have someone who sits in the middle of the Venn diagram of... They're very good to craft, like, so good to craft that other people want to be good at that craft, but they also have to be very good at teaching and presenting. Neil Gaiman at the was same time great one. to yeah. make a good course that's really yeah. engaging to watch. And the number of people who actually have uh, both those skills uh, is probably very limited. Like, there's a whole bunch of, like, scummy courses. Like, you see this in, like, finance all the time, where people are like, I'll teach you how to turn one dollar into a billion dollars in a week. All you need to do is give me a hundred dollars up front. It's like, well, if you could turn a dollar into a billion dollars, why don't you just do it and have a billion dollars and not spend your time selling, you know, courses to idiots? Like, yeah. why don't you just... That that strikes me as an odd thing for you to be doing. Why is this your living rather than just taking all your money and turning it into ten times as much money, giving you your parent now to do that and could reliably teach others to do it? No, so you've got people who are good at the grift who are good at the presenting side but have no actual skill to actually, you know, teach. And then you've got people who actually do have some form of interesting potential insights but they can't communicate how to no, teach no, John, it. John, 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 you don't understand. They're just really, really passionate about selling supplements for men. Because mm. because obviously us men, soy boys. Right? I've never seen, <laughs> like, I'm not sure I've ever seen anyone, like, d- doing this, this supplements for men. Where is this? Is this just, does this live in the weird political space that I just stay <laughs> far, far away from? No, Probably. I mean, it's a bit, yeah. I mean, Because what Shapiro's, I see is, I see a fuck fucking... ton of HelloFresh... I see, a, <laughs> I see a fuck ton of HelloFresh. I see a fuck ton of... Oh, what's that one where you learn skills? Skillshare. <laughs> Skillshare. Yeah, what, I was just trying to you said, what's that one where people share their skills? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, fucking, you got your NordVips. You got your, 
You got your you got your morning brew, which is just a data harvesting scam. You I see, mean, I don't see that one. I don't know if like maybe like you can learn something about yourself based on a based on the content you watch, what like sponsorships you get more than any other. Cause I swear I get I get so much more HelloFresh than anything else. And like, does this say something about me? No, I see HelloFresh. Like, do, does it like make me a wang briefly? Can I just briefly oh, say something? Oh well, yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes. Download sponsor block because it just basically skips those bits of the YouTube videos. Fucking ace. I did it. I got it. It's great. It's great shit. I've never seen a sponsorship thing. But, right, here's... <laughs> well, the, there's two problems. J, the only ones I like are Jay Foreman's. Because they are I very don't even funny sketches that. in and of themselves. I don't watch them. I can't stand... I, e even if it's good... I uh, know it's advert. If it's deliberately no, advertising... Some yeah. people integrate them really nicely. Do you ever watch um, Oversimplified History? No. Yes. They integrate the sponsorships in a really fun way using the characters that they're talking about at the same time. And it's fun. I hate it. I can't. It makes my brain itch. I okay. always skip. But, but this is the thing. The, the ones that really fuck me off the most are the mainly the ones for honey and um, honey and what the? literally the one I just mentioned. Skill I've never share. seen integrated honey. I've seen honey as like the thirty second pre roll. I've never seen an integrated honey. Well, I'm not sorry, integrated sorry, honey. sorry, sorry. Morning am, am bro. I, honey I, and morning bro. Am I having an, uh, having an episode? That's... Honey is a browser extension owned by PayPal that automatically applies like discount codes. Right, not actual honey. Carry on. Yeah, <laughs> and morning <laughs> brew is this like. I mean, if, admittedly, which... if I just showed up and someone was submitted here, and now what for my sponsor? Bees. <laughs> Bees of Patreon. <laughs> They do need the attention, bees. They do need the money. <laughs> no, all right. Honey and, and, and uh, Morning Brew. Morning Brew sends you aggregated news emails every morning. Wow. I'm here to tell you about honey, myself. and if I don't, the bees will sting me. But, but the whole thing about both these things is that they are free services, right? So, like, you just get it. It's free. It's not free. They're stealing your data. That's what, that's, that's what they're doing. Amazon owns Rumba what? now. Oh, oh. Amazon, so Amazon have cameras outside your house, cameras inside your house, microphones inside your house. They really want to see me wanking. Wait, what does, what does a Roomba have cameras and shit? Yeah, it has cameras. No, it's yeah, kind of ones, just yeah. like a little sensor to detect whether something was in no, front of it or the, not. The higher end ones, John, have, not only do they have like full LiDAR and stuff like that, they have cameras and mo some of the more modern ones, you can actually remote control Wait, them and use them LIDAR? as remote control security it's cameras. It's like radar, but for not the truth. It can detect lies. It won't clean it's, Alex it, Jones' house. That's it the... <laughs> fires. It fires basically infrared out and reflects it back, and it can just tell it's a depth sensor. Basically. So basically, it can it's, 3D like, map it's, a room. it's mapping the room around it. Yeah, with yeah. 3D, and then it can use. And modern ones use cameras to also apply like actual, literal, visual data to it, so you can look at it. But also, I say you can remote control them around and just look at the cameras and use them as like a remote control security camera, which is weird. So like, logically, imagine like, a Amazon's your house. using this to determine who has how many rooms and, and what No, rooms. no, no. You can scrape that data really easy from things like floor plans and other places. What I think they're going to use it for, if they're going to use it for nefarious things, is like, oh, you've got this kind of table. Here's the thing that goes with that kind of table. That's it. That's, that's legitimately... I, see, all table this shit accessories. that happens... All this that's thing the that best happens, example you could come up with. I this is why you don't run the evil corporation. I genuinely don't give a shit, right? Have my data. I'm not like I what I don't care. All these all these things, it's like it's like, oh yeah, but if you've got an Alexa in your house, then I mean this oh, does make a lot of sense. This is this is why the Roomba was like hovering suspiciously in the room that you know, whenever I'm watching hovering. Porn and wanking. <laughs> yeah. That that's makes what a lot it does. of sense. I mean, what's that gonna do to my career? For a video of me wanking comes out, everyone's gonna be like, yes, yeah, Dan. And just carry on. It's great. I'm. I'm <laughs> nothing's gonna happen at that point. But I, I just don't give a shit. All these big corporations have got your data. All right, fuck off. I don't care. I block all the adverts. That's all you get out of it at the moment is adverts. If I'm planning a coup, I'll probably unplug the Alexa. Is all I'm saying. In the states, I think it's a bit different. Over here, it's one thing, but in the states, it's a lot. Different. Oh, over in the states, you know, they'll come in your house and shoot your dog just because you're. Just black, I suppose, is the real the ending of that sentence. Is uh, oh, there was there's three people who did the crime. They're stabbing Joe, a white man, raping Billy, a white man, and just Keith over there. What color is his skin? That's my impression of the uh, the police American, in America. That was, that was American police officer, was it? That was Excellent. my breakdown. One more tink. There he goes. Kaplunk is out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve Martin teaches a good masterclass course. Anyway. Really? Yeah, Steve Martin's on. Samuel L. Jackson does an acting one on those. Really I was about good. to say, is his like stand up comedy acting, which exact like. Because the man's got many hats. Basically, no, he goes through all of it. No, 
Is his master what does he do a banjo masterclass? Because I would watch a Steve Martin banjo masterclass. No, he does not do. I think he whips his banjo what out at one fuck? point though. That's I mean, quite, he's got, of course he whips his banjo out. He brings his banjo to everything. Oh my something. god! Everything he's in, he's always got a banjo. Hillary yes, Rodham Clinton teaches the oh. power of resilience. Oh my fucking god! I'm so look. I'm sorry. I don't want to go to Cedar Rapids. You can't make me. <laughs> It sounded like Matt jumped out the window then. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, so if you want to know how to be resilient to stuff, ask the woman who's uh, lost an election to Donald Trump. <laughs> Which is incredible. That's an incredible thing to do. Yeah. Anyway. And also, I was married to Bill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, That's I wish true. You that. Still um, married. Imagine yeah. that suddenly not being the worst thing about you anymore that's the <laughs> imagine yeah, no, it's, imagine ah yeah. oh, well done well done. I'm okay glad it's... I've, I've got i've got one thing yeah. here that i think might help slowly push dan towards his mental breakdown oh let's go oh, for it go. Like, like, friends, it's, not, it's not like specifically upsetting but it just feels slightly it's not... like it's going to help a person go bananas it's anyway. not specifically upsetting <laughs> Why are there so many edible Pokemon all of a sudden? Okay. Why can you eat so many of them? What the fuck is happening? When? When did this happen? There's there's a dog made of dough. Right. His name's I'm going to say this now. Fido, if he doesn't evolve into thoroughbred, I am going to no, be No, I said purebred. I, I say purebred. Ah, oh, thoroughbred. That's what he needs to be. Not purebred. Thoroughbred. I, I don't think there's enough characters for thoroughbred. Well, there's fucking 700 of the fucking cunts. Of course, there's Why don't they characters. just have two evolutions? They have purebred and then thoroughbred. Oh, I shit! Think I think Pokemon the rules, I think like, the rules always been 10 characters. 10 characters per Pokemon name. I think that. I think it always has been. That's bollocks. What about what about Mew 65? I don't know. Mew. I played Pokemon Go and it's got to the point of Pokemon. It's just like a dude. And I'm like... No, yeah, that, I, I've been playing a lot a more I mean, offense, the big dude from the beginning, just, you know, Ash's mom does does have that Mr. Mime who, who applies suntan lotion to her when they go on holiday, and it's it's all slightly weird that he's sort of a slave, sort of a pet. That okay, I've just opened quite, my Pokemon Go. That is There's a monkey with a broccoli on his head. That's it. That's all it is. That's, yeah. That, that's quite... Are we all right with Mr. Mime? Well, I, I've, I've never, no one's ever been like. There's always been questions about the human, human style poke, especially like when the Pokedex specifically says, "Hey, this is Alakazam. It's way cleverer than you are." It's like, well, then why am I its master, and why does it live in a ball to fight at my, the commands of a ten-year-old if it's smarter than any human being on Earth? It's not that John, smart, is it? Because it literally lives in a fucking ball doing cock fights. You, uh, John, I don't. I, I I know you may not have heard of it because you're a, a, a 18th century ghost, but there's a thing called slavery. Um, I think in the 18th century, John would have been very much aware of slavery. <laughs> wow. I'm not, I'm yeah. Yeah, but like, okay. Oh, come on, John. If, you would have been a slave owner. L let's not brush around that right now. John, no, you would have owned I slaves. I would not. I would have oh, been. Yeah. You would, would have been, been the one, one of the fucking reformers in the House of Commons up, nah. beating the drum to end slavery, which was nah. happening at that time. Fuck you, you. You would have been going to the, the, the big storage place where they keep all the slaves. The Look, big agree to disagree. Place. I think the only Liverpool, thing we can agree Daniel. is at that point in history, Matt would have been a slave. Matt would have been a slave, but not Matt would, that. Matt would have been, or Matt no. would have been dead because we didn't bother no, I, feeding no, him. Yeah, no, I wouldn't people. have been a slave. I would have been dead. I would have been dead. <laughs> I feel <laughs> I like dead. I've got the energy of like someone on the side of the street selling. No, snake oil salesman, maybe. I think I yeah, could have got I, away I with. Yeah, I see you as a snake oil salesman. Yeah, you can get you can get away with that. But no, you were. I can see myself shot. as an inventor who never invented anything, like. But you know, yeah. I'm a born member of the aristocracy who really liked the idea of being an inventor and kept trying to invent things, but they were all shit and none of them worked. But it didn't matter because I was fabulously wealthy due to the labour of peasants who worked on my land. So it didn't matter. There's a fucking Even. candle. <laughs> This Pokemon's just a fucking candle. <laughs> it's called Litwick. It's just a fucking candle. Yeah, Why but it evolves Richard into... No, Branson you fucking leave Litwick class. alone. It evolves into Chandelure and it's awesome. Chandelure. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Richard dear. Branson. What is it just... Is it just him talking about that it one says, time he was on Only Fools and Horses? I did it then specifically because it teaches disruptive entrepreneurship. So I was being disruptive. I hope that... You mean the man whose every business he's owned has failed? <laughs> oh, he killed some people in a spaceship crash. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what I know about him. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. he called it Virgin, which was a great name. That's not got no connotations in the slightly negative way. This one's a bumhole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know Solo the book what you're talking cold. about. It's like green or something, isn't it? No, Solo says it floats and it's a bu- it's a bumhole. Oh, it's it's a bot with a bumhole in. No, Solo says. Yeah, that's a great... Solosis, yeah. You know, I don't look at that and think bumhole, because my bumhole's not a diamond. Oh, my you've God. Been not, you've not looked at enough bumholes, John Curry. I'm not sure what's wrong with your ass, but my, my mine's are a gaping diamond shape. <laughs> well, depends what you put in that, John. Mine is. <laughs> I just... Just Matt has seen mine as well. It's my wherever oh, I can... no, please Well, not. he said he's seen me kaplunk a few times. I mean, that's, the, that's what he was uh, referring to. Was I've he... seen you faint, and I've seen you punch a door. Like, I think that's enough. <laughs> Not at the same time. <laughs> no. Well. Will writes on this. He teaches game design and theory. That was a really good one. Who? Will Wright. Oh. Will... Wait, who else? Uh, sorry, that's right. This is not a... This is not an advertisement for Masterclass. Just watch Drugan's video. Oh, my be, God. Bill yeah. Clinton's on here as well. <laughs> What's Bill doing? Oh, Tony Hawk teaches skateboarding. I feel like that would probably need a bit more of a practical exam. What is, sorry, what's Bill doing? He's teaching inclusive leadership. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he included quite a lot of interesting things Whoa, in his leadership. Oh, boy. <laughs> Whew. I mean, I'm looking, I went on the website and the, the one at the top is just Neil deGrasse Tyson who's just going to teach you, oh. I'm assuming, over 30 hours how to be a cunt on Twitter. <laughs> It's such a fucking piece of shit. Actually, Daniel, shit is is actually not in pieces. I'll have you know. He is the most intolerable you spread human everything out, being I've ever... It's just molecules. You actually breathe shit into your nostril. He's one of those people who thinks he sounds clever, but he actually just sounds like a wanker. Like Brian Cox as well, but not Brian Cox isn't as bad. Brian Cox has got a little bit of the actual awe and majesty, but Neil deGrasse Tyson is, Look at my giant science brain! <laughs> Look at all the facts I can pull out! Elephants can't jump! Woo! I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson! I'm on Twitter now! Oh, actually, related to the... That'd be the, like the a mass Pokemon shooting. Thing. He's like, actually, it's not considered a mass shooting unless two people are killed. In it. And you're like, fuck off, you dumb cunt. Actually, no, it's not to... literally. If it's not literally... <sighs> Natalie Portman related teaches to... acting, which is interesting, because I've never seen her do it. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> She's good in that, true. that SNL rap. I'll give her that, but I don't like her in. Um... Sorry, did you think that fucking Star Wars Episode 1 was a fucking classic of the. No, but she's been in other things. She was in that, what was that post apocalypse thing? She was supposed to be quite good in that. That film you can remember the name of. She was that good yeah, you remember the name of. She was so good film. in Fallout. Whatever the fuck it was. This isn't hard to fucking check. I've she got the internet in front of me. It was the worst me. bit of the MCU. I haven't even seen the new Thor because she's in it. I uh, haven't because, oh yeah. yeah, I went to France that had fucking COVID. So we'd been, we'd been kind of not been able to make it to the oh, theatre. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm... fuck off. She was in Black Swan and she was really quite good in Black Swan. Really quite good. Wow, I want to be taught by someone who's quite good. Uh, Matt, here's one for you. Chris Hadfield teaches space exploration. I feel like that's not a thing I could practically apply to my real yeah, life. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Like, oh, I know how to go to space now. I'll just go and do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, but what I mean, I think good? I need a second course on how to build a rocket. Yeah. Well, I got Scott Malley to do one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, David Lynch. I watched David Lynch's one. He's a fucking lunatic. I love that boy. Is fucking Dickie Dawkins on there? Dickie Dawkins? Richard Dawkins. What's he going to teach? Being a cunt? Yes, I saw. Right, when I was proper edgy, like, atheist teen, Matt, uh-huh. um, I did go and see a Richard Dawkins lecture, and it was the wankiest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it was at the Royal Albert Hall, and it was the... Oh, my God. I've never... Oh my God. No, I wouldn't want to. I've read his... I read a bit of his book. Once somebody got me one of his books for Christmas once, and I was reading it, and I was like, he's wanking what writing this, isn't he? <laughs> he's definitely having a wank. Like, there's definitely... He's- oh, look at my big science brain! <laughs> R.L. Stein's teaching writing for young audiences. I kind of regret I haven't seen that one. That sounds really good. That sounds Daniel, fun. Every time I've seen an interview with R.L. Stein, he seemed like uh, really fun. Really fun. Uh, Ringo Starr teaches drumming and creative collaboration. <laughs> oh, mm. 
Uh, Can he not yeah, teach narrating Tom's the Tank Engine? Ringo, known for being the best drummer in the piece. Sorry, sorry. Okay, guess what this one is. Metallica are on here. What are Metallica teaching? Makeup. Ethics and games journalism. <laughs> no, they're teaching being a band. <laughs> Just being that a is band. the thing they literally are, yes. <laughs> yeah, all right. You got that. Uh, What's that involved? Just being like, this is Jim. Oh, look. Oh, look at Hello, that. Oh, that's it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Helen Mirren teaches acting. Imagine you could actually get acting classes from someone who could act or Natalie Portman. But you know, it's amazing. She right? was You've also good in V for Vendetta. No, she and wasn't. And Garden State. <laughs> that's a film where she got outacted by Stephen Fry. That's I mean, true. That's <laughs> All these fucking people, all these famous people. You've Annihilation, that was the end of the world hair. film she was in where she was good. Oh, with the big bear. Was she the big bear? Because that was the best bit. The big bear? Annihilation, Wait, another one with the big bear. Bear monster what? thing. One with the weird wobbly aliens. Was, was it a bear? I thought there was a big bear thing. Big bear thing. You're right. Is that Annihilation? I can't search. remember a big bear thing. Annihilation bear. Bear. The mutant bear scene. Yeah, it's the oh, one okay. with the big fucking bear. She played Jackie Kennedy well. In it's... Jackie, I'll give her that. Okay, good. She played a Kennedy well. Yeah, which is it's such a low bar, admittedly. <laughs> so I've got a new segment for the podcasts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it... it... I've been trying to listen to other podcasts. Is it I Hate Scientists or I Hate Natalie Portman? Which is it? I like scientists. I don't like cunts. I mean, Natalie Portman in The Thor does play a scientist. so we can I sort will of just... listen to every single thing that comes out of Richard Feynman's mouth. Like, oh, everything. It's amazing shit. But I don't like people who like, ooh, look at my science brain. Ooh, yes, monkeys went like this. Richard Dawkins just knock off fucking the other one, innit? The one I'm thinking of. Yep. Yeah. Say so yes, and I'll stop talking. Carl Sagan. What's his name? Who did the thing? Oh, with the other one who did the thing, with right. With the monkeys. more than that. With the monkeys and evolution. D David what? Attenborough? No, the, the, the monkeys and evolution. Darwin? And Darwin, Charles Darwin. <laughs> Dawkins and Darwin. He's a knockoff, and he's trying to be the new Darwin, but he's, he doesn't eat no, the turtles. No, he's turtle. what? Yeah, he is. <laughs> no, he is. He's trying to be that, but also being a sexist. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, just generally a cunt. I mean, I can see the. I can see what he's going for. I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson's always been a, a just kind of cheap Carl Sagan knockoff without the. Oh, I love Carl Sagan. Yeah. Is this? But that's a Carl Sagan. But he was he was Carl Sagan's. You know, fucking. What's the um? What's the word I'm looking for? Is it a French word? Oh yes, croissant. Boulangerie. Yes, he, he was Carl, he was Carl, <laughs> Carl Sagan's croissant. It's I'm a French expert at the moment. I was in France the other week. Oh, oh did you I'm say so bonjour sorry. like three times? I did. I said other things Whoa. too. But I'm gonna be honest. I, I was feeling I was feeling quietly confident. But then um, everyone spoke really fast, and with uh, there were other people around speaking at once, and I completely failed to keep up. I can Excellent. imagine John in like a, on a French holiday, looking like Mr. Bean at the beach with just a <laughs> suit on and just his. Trousers rolled up and he's like, what's your, what's your? Okay, you're not wrong, I was wearing a suit, but in my defence, I was at a wedding, so it was kind of appropriate. <laughs> um, if I'd showed up in shorts and a Hawaiian shirt, it would have raised eyebrows. Did you? Daniel will turn up to, in shorts and a Hawaiian shirt to literally anything. I'm wearing shorts and a Hawaiian shirt now. Is it? Are they pink shorts? Do they have Snoopy on them? Orange shorts today. Oh, well, lottie da, Mr. Frenchman. Because I, I am a dietist and I go to the gym now. There's a thing. It's true, I go to the gym. I'm, I do gym now. I'm losing weight. I've lost 12 kilos. I go to the That's gym. That's a lot. Yeah, I know. Fuck I've all of you. Mind. Not too fast, I, I hope. Uh, 80 days. It was my 80th day, I think, around today. Okay, that's, I've lost, that, that seems reasonable. That I've lost like a 10 good kilos. You lost I've 10 lost 10 kilos. kilos in the past 10 weeks. Oh, that's bad. Ooh, too fast. Too fast. Too fast. Speedy. No, there's a reason. Uh, there's a medical reason for that. Oh, yeah. You shat your lower intestines out, didn't you? Would you like no, to tell that? <laughs> I, got, I finally got diagnosed for the reason for my fatigue. Yay. What is it? I have a hypo... Uh, I have hypothyroidism. Oh, what's that when which it's is at home? Underactive, it just means you have an underactive thyroid. 
And if you have an underactive thyroid, it means that your metabolism is really slow and you just don't lose any weight, which means my average calorie intake of 1,200 a day was just maintaining my weight. And now I'm on uh, replacement pills. My body's went, oh yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> Yay, you need to eat more. I'm all right. As well Come to my house. Not, I'll give you that like, is, 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 Isn't that like an adult male supposed to be 2,500? 1,700 yes. is what I'm on. Mm. I do calorie counting. I don't. I, I, I can't do that. I find it not fun. No, oh, I, I agree. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't you're right. Yeah, dieting's not that fun. But I am a, a dietist. I yeah, do... but if I did, if I if I tried to like lose weight or get fitter by doing something that wasn't fun, I just wouldn't keep doing it. So it needs to be like something that's still fine, it's... like you know, slightly more sensible portions, being a bit more John active needs but his doing fucking fun vegetables. Shit. Fucking given to him, like here comes the airplane. It's not fun. He doesn't like eating his vegetables unless it's delivered via fucking little fork airplane. Isn't it? It's just open wide, John. It's just discipline. That's all it is. I'm just I'm getting discipline. I go to the gym. I like the stair machine. Where you have Can to I just climb say, stairs. by the way, Re Rebecca keeps sending me photos of you two at the gym. Yeah, it's not pretty sight, me, is it? No, but what I find really funny is Rebecca always looks like, yeah, sport, and you just look so miserable. <laughs> I look like I'm in dying. Ev in every photo, you look so fucking miserable to be there. <laughs> I did buy, they do a thing where they check your, like, metabolic age, and I'm 48. And that I'm was, excited what's a to metabolic do that at some point? age? It's like how old your age? actual body is or something. It's like how well it. I've got the body a, of a quarter. It doesn't sound like science to me. It, it was. It's it the was, average metabolic health of each age group, and they can compare it to specific. Yeah, it was groups. like ridiculous science. I'm quite happy. I've got all the information. It all went oh blip on this app thing that I I don't use really. I just listen to ELO and got climb upstairs and weep. Weep. You climb forty flights of stairs. It's like oh, you can have one sesame snap now, and I just want to throw myself off the stairs, but it's only three <laughs> stairs at a time, so. It's not that bad. I don't like the... <laughs> I bought shoes as well. Proper shoes. Oh, my God. You yeah. see, I mean, while I'm They're not blue. counting calories, uh, and uh, I'm not... Uh, and, and I'm not, like, wanting to throw myself off the stairs. Yeah, but you're fat as house, mate. You're a fucking lard bucket. Uh, oh, it's you. That's not even remotely <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't what? know. Dan, I can't Dan's recall your face. in a bit of mood today. I Admittedly, you, you you two have only ever met once and for about three minutes, and I had to force Maybe Dan it. was just in a rush to get away from me, or it was catch a train. It was one or the other. It was to go to Five Guys before I got a train. <laughs> yeah. That's what the rush was, because it was outside the Five Guys. In, um, you know what's weird? That day, in the space of about an hour, I saw you and John and Ashens separately. Yeah. I and none of you met. Well, aside from you and John very briefly, which was and really I, weird. And John didn't meet Ashens. And it, I met Ashens. Which it, yeah, but this is the thing. Right? We long time we've joked that Ashen that, that John's a waxback Ashen's figure. Yeah, and I didn't and, see the two of them. No, and that was the one chance for it to be disproved. Yeah, and it didn't happen. It, it wasn't, no. It didn't happen. Did it, Lilith? No. no. Sound a winch. You have a winch. No. I got Barry's book. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> for you. It's good. It? It's like I'm a fetch quest. I'm a living fetch quest. I didn't quest. tell John about the potential terrorist attack. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Remember, remember we were on the tube train and like the two behind us like got closed and the whole station got stopped and all police came because people oh. thought there was a terrorist attack. Oh no, yeah, it's... there was smoke or something running around and it was uh, we were on the next no, train. There wasn't we even like... smoke. The reason for that was that two people got on a fist fight. Some people started running. People saw the other people running. Went, oh my god, something's going on. Then everyone started running and then other people saw the entire train thing running. Went, oh my god, there's a terror attack. It's, it's and it not to be careful with shit like that because that shit sometimes like escalates into hey, people just got trampled to death. Yeah, I've seen the no, Lion yeah, it was, King. It was, it was mass panic. It was 100% mass panic. Yeah. I saw, oh, oh, I oh. saw Book of Mormon the other day. The book, that's mass panic. M mass. As in, ma as in church, mass. Ma ma the Book of Mormon. <laughs> I don't think Mormons go to mass. I'm pretty sure that's just a Catholic thing. What? Mormons go to mass? So very just quickly write down Mass Panic as a video pun title to use if I'm ever playing no, a game but, featuring but, but, Catholicism. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure mass Ooh. is just specifically related to Catholicism. No. Yeah. No. Don't, like, some Church of England have their own, like, version of mass? It's yeah. just, like... They, they have a, they they have they, a church they, they had, they, They're just a bit more vague on what, what's happening. Yeah, they still do it, but they think it's a <laughs> metaphor and not actually let's let's be vampires. Okay, the mass is the central. Lit lit oh my god, lit that's a word. Liturgical. 
Yes, the liturgical rite in the Catholic Church encompassing the liturgy of the word Mass of the Catchet. <laughs> you're, you're really doing well with words there, Matt. That was good. Thank you. These are words I've never seen before, and honestly, they scare me. I used um, to go to church. <laughs> wow, everyone. I used to go to church every Sunday until I was told, you're old enough to not... You're old enough to make your own decision now. And my decision was to never go back. Here we go. Anglican I... churches do mass. Yeah. It's just a bit different. Yeah, they're like reading Don't... from the book of Elton John to the letter Mo- from Mormon Elton John mass. to Hello Magazine. Oh my God. I searched Mormon mass and the first thing that came up was Mormons and violence. <laughs> <laughs> the Wikipedia article for Mormonism and violence. Hello. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that must have just blown people's mind when they translated the Bible and started doing the services in England. It's like, imagine you're a medieval peasant, as we've established, that'd be Matt. Uh, (laughs) back in time. You spend your entire life going to church and the the, the guy at the front's just speaking Latin if you know what the fuck's going on. Occasionally, like, you know, gestures for you to come up and you get given some bread and some wine. I think, oh, this is nice. At least, you know, I get fed out of this, which is good because that's more than the English are doing for me. Uh, and then, you know, you go sit back down and then one day it's like, guys, we're Anglican now. So the service is going to be in English. You come up and the lad says, right, this is the flesh of Christ and the blood of Christ. Like, Shit, is that what I've been eating and drinking this whole time? Fuck, no one told me it was in Latin. That must have been fucking mind blowing. Yeah. Holy shit. You're right. That would have been that. I think could have translated into anything and I still well, would have Well, no, related to that, food. if when you, when you, when you shit out your, your, communion is that holy shit no it's not it's because it becomes deconsecrated, the food is holy. deconsecrated when you digest it mm, is that actual ingested. religion that you remember from going to church now nah, maybe that just sounds right if i use the word like deconsecrated people will believe me mm. yeah that does I, went... that. I, I, I would have bought that <laughs> I, I would have accepted that as true i went to one church service in my life you have uh, to get it back out I'm... that's what you have to do is you have to sieve <laughs> and you have to get the wafer sieve. back and you, you, oh, yeah. you then have to put it back in the pot Wash it off in holy water. Rinse it first. Yeah, God's you wash sake. it off in holy water. Just... That's true, actually. Normal tap water wouldn't do the job. No. That logically is what holy water's for. I drank some holy water once. How was that? Burnt. Water, mate, innit? It yeah. burnt on the inside. Mm. I want to... Genuinely, I want to try... Literally, I only went to... Because my parents are very religious. They never... The only time I ever went to a church was as a baby when my grandmother uh, secretly christened me. Because <laughs> she's a, she was a staunch Irish Catholic and was quite annoyed at my parents not christening me, so she went for a walk one day. And when I got, they, she especially took a route through a church. And when I got back, my mum noted that my head was suspiciously wet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you died, you were no longer going to hell, which is where babies <laughs> well, go it, yeah. unless you baptize them. Babies uh, go to hell. And should we talk about abortion in America? No. <laughs> so, so no to the old republic's been cancelled forever. <laughs> well, related to knights of the old republic, American Republicans, right? Oh fuck! So they... <laughs> uh, uh, oh, what's this? I've already mentioned the edible Pokemon. Fuck! I've run out of things to distract them with. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Well, okay, if you want to go back to one thing, I saw an article the other day that turned up on my Twitter, and the question was: We're going to be able to make mammoths soon. Uh-huh. Should we? Comma, eat them? Yeah, Comma should we eat them, yes. No, Comma Such should... a weird question to start with. No. Should we bring animals back to eat them? No, it should be Comma, should we elect them president? That's what we should be asking <laughs> about mammoths. Could you imagine it's like, yes, and what do you think, Joe Biden? Well, I think something boring he reads off a teleprompter. It's like, okay, what do you think, Susan? <laughs> I would vote for a mammoth right now. Yeah. I'd oh, vote God. for a mammoth over Liz Truss. Wait, wait, who, 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 uh, who, Who's who Liz voices Truss? the mammoth in Ice Age? What? what? I don't know. I'm not a child. I've never seen those films. Who voices the mammoth in, in Ice Age? Ross Geller. Not even Ray, David Schwimmer. Ray Romano. It's just Ross Geller. I'm not going to Ra- vote for Ray Romano as Tory PM. No. No. I mean, I'd take him over Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak. You know. They're great, I mean, By the way, it's the like 45 is... degrees and it, they're like, nah, there's no climate change. And the, do you know what mammoths fun? migrate in the same way elephants do? No, they're all dead, Because if they John. do, I want them back. They're all dead, John. Yeah, but <laughs> if we brought, if we're bringing them back. No, we're bringing them back with Earth, science. Earth's magnetic field will be flipped. They'll be fucked off. They won't know which way's up, literally. They'll just float the fuck away. That's how that works. 
That's how it works in science. It's science. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's, that, that doesn't sound like science. No, that's science. Me. Science. I don't think that's Fla- science. Nah, they fly away like helium balloons. Yes, yeah, true. I'm just thinking oh, we're elephants. Away. <laughs> Elephants, when they decide they're going to commute a particular way, like, well, not commute, migrate the other commute. one. Commute. Like, <laughs> You're sitting you there. The well, You're off to summer it. we go. Put You're on my just... hat, grab my briefcase. Got Trump a space Trump. on the bus next to you and an elephant gets on. You're like, please, for fuck's sake, not next to me. Not next to when me. When elephants migrate, they always go the exact same route. And if something's been built the way, they just fucking go straight through it. And if mammoths do the same thing, great. Because they might just decide, like, leaves okay, is well, in the way, and then well, decide, well, fuck John, leaves, we're going to headbutt it out the way. Quite noble thing. What, what do you think the habitat of mammoths is, John? Because I can pretty safely tell you that there's not really anything in the way. Yeah, it, was every, it was just normal weather, innit? They're just in the ice, because that's where they're frozen in the Yeah, films. but if we bring them back, then surely they're going to be like, you know, something like Scotland. I feel like Scotland feels to me like mammoth territory. Sorry, what? you want us to bring back mammoths? Just let them out and leave. Just like, off you go, mate. Yes, otherwise, what's the Good point luck. of laying mice? Like we, br- like, like, we reintroduce beavers, and they're doing a really good job. Okay. I think the we're going to bring back mammoths, the, the, and the whole point is eventually they've the, got to be released. Okay, the, yes. the very weak ecological argument for bringing back mammoths is, and I'm going to quote an article here, um, they're going to help compress the permafrost, which is a very weak argument. Now, that no. sounds like a sort of thing they'd have in Scotland, a permafrost. If we can clone dead things, wouldn't it be funny... <laughs> To clone Hitler <laughs> and get a, a new Hitler and then put him in like a Truman Show style bubble and see what happens. I'd watch it. To, what to, 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 to like verify what, nature versus Hitler nurture show? or something? No, just well, like you have like Truman an Eva Braun knockoff fucking advertising co- cocoa pops like yeah. in the middle of the show. Yeah. I mean, I know we've been through the BBC to make a sitcom about this, but like a reality TV show starring the actual Hitler. Like you could put him in anything and it'll be like a running gag across like Love Island. But Hitler's one of the contestants and they don't know because they're on Love Island. So they don't know he is. Like, oh, Adolf's a bit of I've never seen Love Island. I don't know what it's about. But they'll be like, oh, Adolf. Oh, I like him. And he's like, yeah, he's got his hair like slicked to the side and looking really badass in that dumb, ugly way that he did. He's a piece of shit! I'm not trying to advocate Hitler was a good person when I said... But you are trying to advocate bringing him back from the dead and then raising him to celebrity status. But only for fun. (laughs) (laughs) I want to bring Hitler back from the dead only for fun. Yeah. I'm just trying to say, I think like when when both of us get our turn with the bring people back from the dead machine and you bring back Hitler and I bring back a mammoth, history will be kinder to me. Jurassic Park, but with historical figures. No takers? <laughs> no, I, I've got to be honest. No, I immediately right. thought, of, one, I immediately thought of a joke and then immediately thought, no, I'm not saying that out loud. No, wait, and no, I thought of another one and thought, like, I'm not like saying that out loud either. Hitler's so basically, running. I've just thought of three jokes I'm not ever saying out loud again. <laughs> John, no. you already got cancelled last time. You can say whatever you want. No, I'm not. I'm not fucking saying it. John, with all due respect, all the lovely people at home already know you You really hate people no, that have a skin not, tone not, darker not than like... All right, I'm just focusing on bringing back mammoths and reintroducing them to Scotland. I don't care whether they were in Scotland ah, or not. I just feel oh, like there need to be happens. mammoths in see, Scotland. And while we're no, there, this is... Herman Goering. Bring back John's, Herman Goering. See, you know what John's doing here, everyone? John, right, we're trying to talk about racial justice and John's just trying to shout you with mammoths. Yep. That's how much John cares about your rights. John was just happy really like mammoths, all right? I just feel like there's not enough giant mega beasts in the oh, world today. Oh, you know what? You should vote for Liz Truss. She's going on about fucking opening new pork markets. Like fucking... <laughs> no, oh, I think... British Truss, apples. Oh, I God, think that's a all. euphemism for fucking Boris Johnson. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, the, so that's a no on the bringing back fascist... Fascist park is what you could call it. You I mean, just... all I'm imagining is just like... It's just like a bunch of just grown oh my men God. in a big paddock. Yeah, no, <laughs> just... right? But no, here's okay, the thing, I'm, right? I'm, okay, Dad, I'm, going to, I'm just going to point out to you. Yeah. Like, we have a series of, like, the, the scenario you're talking about, where you're basically saying Jurassic Park, but fascist leaders of the past, yeah. right? 
We have the Jurassic Park extended films, all the films they've made, and they specifically point out, hey, there's a risk that the creatures we brought back might find a way to reproduce, multiply, escape the island, and potentially take over the world. Ah, but Jurassic like, Park that's is been not... specifically raised as a possibility. Why no, would no, you no, want no, to no, therefore no, no. do that with Hitler's? The theme of Jurassic Park is not bringing things back from the dead is bad. It's that cheapo capitalism is bad. If they had invested the money properly and actually, you know, not spared any expense, everything would have been fine. I, I mean, feel like that's I... not in any way the message of Jurassic that's Park. That's the message of Jurassic Park! Bringing the animals back is fine. It's just the shit capitalism that lets no, them No, literally out. the one bit everyone remembers, the one like everyone remembers from Jurassic Park is, you know, whether they could versus whether they should. Like, it doesn't no, matter no, no, how much money you spend. That's some referring... things maybe you just shouldn't uh, fucking do. No, that's referring to cheaping out on the electric fence. And not having a backup Sorry, generator. That's, I don't that's think about. he was talking just about the electric fence. Yeah, it's all about capitalism, John. You've completely missed the point of Jurassic Park. Sorry, irregardless of what the fuck happens in Jurassic Park, it doesn't change the fact that if you had a bunch of Hitlers on an island, I can 100% guarantee you a gang of fascists are going to break into that island and steal Hitler. No, 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 no. But his thing, right, there's loads <laughs> of Even them. if one of the Hitlers doesn't somehow, like, become woman Hitler and then they start breeding new baby Hitlers, as happened in Jurassic Park. No, 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 no. Right. Because we only... had to fill in the Hitler, like, gaps in his DNA with toads. You are, you get Hitler, right? And you make a few of them. You unleash them onto an island. And then you pay for people to go on a hunting safari where they get to hunt the most dangerous game of all. Why do you want to bring all? back toad Hitler, Hitler so much? They, you can hunt Hitler. Sorry. You can blow Hitler away. You can tie him to no, a no, okay, I've got a better idea you for you. Why don't we sorry. bring back anybody who's not Hitler? Because John. why do you want to kill anybody who's not Daniel. Hitler, John? Well, why Daniel. do you want to set up the hunting safari anyway? For Daniel. Hitler! Daniel. Start, there's a Voyager episode about this exact thing. <laughs> Wait, really? About, yeah, well, about Hitler Park? Yeah, well, the... no, it's the one where the hero can take over Voyager and they make a fucking hologram and they're like, oh, I'm going to be Hitler and we're going to hunt down all the non-Hitlers. And then they're like, oh, Hitler's cool. I'm like, maybe we should do this the opposite way around. And then they learn that being Hitler's bad. Yeah, so being Hitler's bad. That's why I want to go kill Hitler. That's what I'm saying is why don't we just clone Hitler so everyone can have a pop at him? I mean, there's... Death's too good for it. Hitler is what I'm trying to say. Let's bring mm. back Hitler... And let's put him in a jungle and let's have people hunt him for sport. And also maybe put him on things like Love Island and the Crystal Lake. Oh, jungle's Maze. even worse. You could just, if he just gets into the jungle, he could just get out the other side. And then he's in Argentina. Got... Yeah, I was going to say. And it's on an <laughs> island. It's, on a, it's obviously on an island. That never goes wrong. We're not going to invent like Oh, yeah, obviously. Because obviously I remember my history lessons. Hitler's soluble. He can't swim. Yeah, and as we know, the Argentinians will just leave islands alone. They're known for it. We'll give him a bit of witch DNA so he can't get wet. That's a lot of silence for a really good idea. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying, we use the doing, machine Daniel? for mammoths first. You're right, Daniel. You see, so you can tell you can generally tell Daniel's state of mind by based on how manic his suggestions are. <laughs> I've got a. Uh, I've got uh, an idea for a segment for this show because I've been, remember this? I've, I've, oh, yeah. I've, I, we don't do enough segments. I've been listening to podcasts and it just becomes us descending into talking about Hitler almost every time now. So yeah, I figured let's have a, a segment where we talk about like something specific and people will be like, oh, I'm always looking forward to that segment. That's so gaming. It's it, supposed to be gaming. Here's my idea for a segment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open up a random word generator, randomly generate a word, and that'll be our topic of the day. That's... All right. Hit okay. okay. Go on. Better yeah. be mammoth. <laughs> random word generator. I hope these exist. Yeah, fuck it. Random word generator. What does it do? Pick up like the bigger word. What do you think it does, John? Number of words, one. Word type, all. First letter, last letter. Syllables. I just want one. Give me a word. The word is agony. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan talking about Hitler Park. <laughs> no, I'm I not kidding. <laughs> I'm going to send a photo of this to Matt because. I wouldn't believe it. Me, does sound like a gag. That does sound like a gag, but I do the believe you. Agony. It's too obvious to be a gag. I'll be honest. <laughs> I've said that to Matt. I have randomly generated yeah, the does, word. It does, agony. Yeah, it does. 
<laughs> it is just. I want to point out, by the way, Dan, you're like, oh, the ads don't know what I'm doing. And that entire page is surrounded by shoes, running shoes. <laughs> it is, including a pair that I bought. Sketches, sketches, running shoes. They've got you fucking to a T, Daniel. They have. <laughs> uh, it's because I'm, I'm, my ad block's not on. Uh, it's because this isn't my uh, thingy. I have one without an ad block and one with an ad block. Shall I, Lego shall I do a different Christ. word instead of agony? Yeah, yeah go on. This entire breaks the entire point. You can't just keep going till you find a word you want to discuss. Well, maybe it'll be a better well, try, word. Look, try one more. Okay. <laughs> Orgy. <laughs> <laughs> this is real. Like, I'm... <laughs> And now we have to do both words, so the agony orgy. So, the Conservative Party election. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that is the that's what's happening in the background of the Conservative Party conference. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Welcome Daniel to the agony orgy. That. No, that second one he also sent me proof for. Yep, no, it, yep. It, it's it. generating the word orgy. There's nothing else on the page. Although, notably now, the ad on the top of the page is, let's go to the United States. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, cool. I, I lazily refreshed. Oh my god, I've refreshed it. Another word is depression. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't so. like this. I don't like this segment. It's owned by Amazon, that random word generator, by any chance. It's currently owned by HSBC. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked a random word generator for three words and it gave you the um, depression orgy agony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, if anything, this is a typical oh, Friday night, night really. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. I could not express to you the so, level of perfection. That was a subject, that was a segment called <laughs> Random Word Generator. We'll never so do it. So, speaking again. of agony depression or <laughs> The it's collapse so of it's water depressing media. It, it's depressing, it hurts, and sex may be involved at some point. Batgirl! Uh, <laughs> Knights of the Old Republic has been... And have you, have you, did you see what happened to Knights of the Old Republic yeah. with the remake? It got killed because they basically went, no. oh, we've not, not made only, this. Not yet. <laughs> like, there's, there's, I think it might be one of the most impressive delays I've ever seen in gaming. Wait, which sorry, is, just to clarify. They you mean fired, that, that game that was announced already? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they fired uh -huh. uh, the significant portion of senior staff and they've not just delayed it, they've delayed it indefinitely and basically said we're pretty much starting over. No, and they haven't I said that. I read that this this happened after they made a tiny vertical slice to demonstrate the game and like shared it with the various stakeholders and it was presu and it may well have just been so bad it led to that. And I desperately want to play this vertical slice. I will say I want someone to leak it. That's not entirely true. They're no. not starting again. They're actually waiting for other things to come through is what people who work there have been saying. They're literally yeah. going on to other projects. It's done. There is going to be no Night of the Old Republic remake of that studio. They are saying in, yeah, indefinite delay, which is very open to whatever the fuck they want it to mean. It's gone forever. Well, which say, might I mean, saw... I think, still the most impressive video game delay of all time, therefore, remains Bloodlines 2. Which not only shed its senior staff and got delayed, but was moved to a secret developer, which Paradox, like, a year on, has still refused to identify. Like, <laughs> it genuinely sounds uh, like a hostage situation. Occasionally, Paradox will tweet things like, oh yeah, Bloodline 2's still doing fine. Like, don't worry, <laughs> it's in good hands. And it, it, it sounds... Like a slight threat. It's like when Rockstar you know, are tweeting like, oh yeah, we're still working on Agent. I, I was thinking more like, you know, when when you just kind of get a letter saying, don't worry, your daughter's perfectly fine. As long as you don't call the police, she'll stay that way. It's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm suddenly concerned by the fact that they're refusing to say where Bloodlines 2 is, who's with Bloodlines 2, and what's going on. It's been a year. They are, it's literally with a secret dev team. That no so, one's that, willing to talk about. I saw a discussion the other day about why we're getting more and more games get announced with a really vague teaser when they're really early in development rather than waiting. Is it something to you do know, with like, money? I bet it's something to do with money. Oh, I know, well, no. I know, I know. Is it because uh, Sony are like, shit, we need to sell PS5s? So well, no, because the, the, the discussion was trying up. to figure out why. You know, like someone like like Todd Howard just, just kind of casually mentioned, you know, kind of said that Fallout 5 was... Sort of vaguely announced Fallout 5. Which is kind of like weird, because Fallout 4 he didn't bother announcing till five days before it came no, out. No, but that's, that's the point. Like, I feel like a lot of the game announcements are getting like, you know, they've announced Night of the Old Republic remake, and they're, they're kind of, what's the point in announcing it? They're not getting pre-orders for it at that point. It's not done. 
It's what you got you got to fill was, them game shows. Yeah, you got to fill them game shows with the hype. It's like, what can we stick in this? Nothing else is done. I know. And game shows are like they won't war. die. They're like vampires. They literally tried cancelling E3, and E3 just sort of happened anyway. Yeah, but from a marketing perspective, surely it's actually more harmful to announce something and then not fall, fall through with it because it just makes people less trusting. No, do you remember Star Wars thirteen thirteen? I remember Star Wars 1313. People vaguely imagined it might be good based on no evidence. Well, it was Amy Hemming. Amy Hemming's Hemming's game, wasn't it? Yes? No? Right? You'll you'll have... uh, I'll take your word for it. I can't remember. I just remember that we knew very little that was actually concrete. But people were like, based on some vague descriptors they'd received, like, oh, it's going to be epic and it's going to be dark and gritty and realistic and huge and open and it's going to be the best game ever. Like, we had no evidence to support this outside of uh, some vague comments and a few bits of concept art. I thought there was footage of it and everything. I think there was, wasn't it? It was just a tech mock-up, wasn't it? No, there was like a gameplay demo E3. I swear there was. Yeah, it wasn't one of those gameplay demos that wasn't actually gameplay, though. It was blatantly just not gameplay. It might have been. Hang on, I'm digging out the gameplay footage here, and I bet it's not gameplay. Okay, cutscene, that's a 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 cutscene. I'm halfway through the gameplay footage, and there's no fucking footage yet. I mean, there's gameplay shooting in one corridor. No, there. there's, there's, there's. I can see that there's, you know, a UI in the corner. You ain't seeing much in the way of. Oh, there's some basic cover base shooting, where the guns don't appear to have much impact. Oh, well done. It's a fucking tech demo. Okay, then we're back into. Then we're back into. Okay, like in the six minute E3 demo full gameplay for Star Wars thirteen thirteen. The first three minutes and last two minutes are mainly cutscenes. There's thirty seconds of cover base shooting in the center, and then there is some like pre-rendered jumping between platform sections. They look very nice, but there's literally no freedom. So it's this is barely gameplay. Oh, that was this is no barely one. gameplay. It's almost like it wasn't done, John. That yeah, wasn't, wasn't Amy started. Hemming's game. Her yeah, game was like a different one that was cancelled four years into development. Oh, God. They've cancelled a lot of Star Wait, Wars games, I'm saying. Amy Henning, she did Uncharted. It's the best thing oh, she's known for. a she, game I don't like. It's true. I mean, she did a lot of Jack and Daxter stuff. She then directed Uncharted uh, 1, I'm pretty sure, 2. Like, she kind of made that thing that was really popular then. You know, really popular. I think Star Wars really works in that format. Of blasting away loads of stormtroopers and having a good time. I think that's... I mean, a I mean, Fallen Order 2, Fallen Order 2 is going to come out soon. That's going to be good. Fallen Order was that. really good. I hope they can keep it up. I bought a Fallen Order Lego set the other day. Good. Th- oh, the the BD1 or whatever it's I called. I bought BD1. Yeah. yeah. I bought nothing yesterday. Or the other day. Actually, that's not true. I had my third Dragon Ball Z figure turn up that's very expensive that I've been saving up for and bought a long time ago, and it finally turned up, and they're the literally nicest figures I've ever got in my entire life. It's not interesting to anybody. I'm just talking because uh, it's a podcast, isn't it? No one gives a shit. Daniel, right. There's, there's, there's a thing, right? <laughs> Daniel doesn't really wait. Daniel basically just spends his money on pogs and Dragon Ball Z. I don't buy pogs. I buy Eagle Moss ships, and Eagle Moss is fucking closed down. What? what? You buy what? Eagle Moss ships. Eagle Moss ships. Eagle. What's an Eagle Moss? Eagle Moss. They, they make they, they made loads of magazines for years that did like you know like build your own DeLorean and figures and stuff. But they they started doing Star Trek ships like years and years and years ago, and they were amazing. And they were like ten pounds a pop, and they were these lovely detailed figures of like different ships from Star Trek. And they did hundreds and hundreds, and they clo- they they started closing down. Yeah. Um, so I panic bought a load of the ships I was missing on eBay before they. Uh, the went website up the still seems to be open and. Go to go to the store. Try and go to the store. Uh, your collection of Star Trek Discovery, UK customers. What? Like if you try and go to the store or a store page, it'll just kind of be like the page doesn't exist. The it website does seem there. to be struggling a bit to locate a store. I'll give you. Yeah, it's really disappointing because they do really, really good figures, and I really want the old season three introduced a load of new shit. Oh, uh, and, and I strange want... new worlds. Strange New Worlds is so fucking good. You know what's really annoying? It's right. the so... best first season of any Star Trek. Oh, it is. And do you know there's, why? There's a... hmm? Do you know why? Because all Star Treks get good when one of the lead characters changes their hair in some way, be it facial or regular hair. 
We all know. Probably this. Orville season three as well. Yeah, it's true. After after the episode in see his first series of Next Generation, where Patrick Stewart shaved all his hair off, that was it was <laughs> much. Better. I mean, it's the I beard mean, moment. That's what it's called, isn't it? It's, the beard it's Riker's beard. Yeah, and what happens yeah, in the, the first episode of Strange New Worlds? Pike's hair gets bigger. Uh, well, yeah, he does in every episode. I don't know how his hair is <laughs> yeah, fucking no. amazing. It's progressively, he just shaves taller. that massive beard off. Yeah, straight in there. They knew it. They knew the I secret. Will say. A few years ago, I would have said, oh, it, Star Trek's in a bad place because it was just disco, right? Yeah. Which, but now we've got Stranger Worlds, which is fantastic. We have the Orville season three, which I genuinely think is the best season of any Trek ever. I must admit, I think Strange New Worlds, which you haven't seen. See, you've not seen Strange New Worlds, all of it. I no, I have. I, I, no, I, I watched up to episode seven. I haven't seen eight, nine and ten. Cool. The three really best episodes of that series. Um, no, it, no, it's great. But the Orville literally, oh my God, it blew me away. It was incredible. I'm really excited to watch the Orville. But I'm not rushing it. I didn't rush Strange New Worlds. I only finished it yesterday when the last episode came. Something out. I really liked about the Orville, right, is it, it felt like a lot of those episodes in season three almost felt like a dig at some of the Star Trek stuff. Yeah. One of the episodes almost felt like a direct dig at um, uh, fucking Rios staying in the past in Picard. Yeah. <laughs> the whole episode is like, oh, you shouldn't stay. It's the entire like hour and 20 minutes is the ethical discussion about that. Well, they wouldn't have um, known that was in the script. Mm. The but, Did you know Huey got, from The Boys is the main character in Lower Decks? Yeah. I did not know that. They are going to be doing a cameo, live action cameo, on another Star Trek. Well, the actors. As their characters. Yeah, Jack well, no, Blades. the actors from Lower Decks. Are going to turn the, up. Three, in the, strange, they, I think it's in Strange they, New Worlds. Hang on. But voice actors very often look nothing like their characters. They they don't actually... They, they don't look off. Like, they look similar enough. Like, they with some makeup and stuff, they could easily look like their characters. Honestly, aren't some of the Lower Decks characters dolphins? Yeah, oh, We're not putting dolphins on, are we? We're putting the three main characters. Well, I think Four that's characters. a bit harsh to the dolphins. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean yeah. who, vo- who voices the dolphins? Dolphins? What? Lower deck I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure they just use dolphin sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they just have subtitles, don't they? Yeah, but now what? We got we got the Orville season three. We've got lower decks. We've got um, strange new strange worlds. worlds. They cancelled the I section wa- thirty one thing, so that's good. Good. I don't. I haven't watched Prodigy yet. I've heard Prodigy's decent. Prodigy's all right. I liked it quite a lot. I, mean, I like the ship. But like, it's, it's a good time. Ship. I think we're in a good time for Star Trek. But a lot of people have said the Orville. It, season okay you know, you know how the jump from season two to season three of tng is really big yes it's a really big it goes from a kind of like a bit i don't really like watching season one to a tng but season three it just gets fantastic yeah um the production quality goes off right and goes up. the awful season three it, i could it's the biggest jump i have ever seen in quality in a television show from like one season it to the is next. it's insane genuinely amazing it truly I, is i right so seth mcfarlane Look, I'm not a fan of most Family Guy jokes, but I do respect the man in that he went, okay, I've, I've gained all this clout from doing Family Guy. F- Fox, I'm set before then. I want to spend millions of pounds making Star Trek, please. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, and that's, it's good. I like the old film. I've only watched the first episode of the new series, though, because I watch it slowly. And I watch Strange oh, yeah, New no, Worlds first. I, Strange New Worlds was so good, though. Oh, like, no, it's it, is, it was new. That's the thing. It was like proper. Yeah. It was. It's the first Star Trek that has felt like Star Trek. Because Lower Decks wouldn't exist without TNG. It's no. very reliant on that sort of thing. It really is, uh, you know, references and silly jokes. And it's like for fans of Star Trek, just have a good time. It's fun, but it's not really like Star Trek, Star Trek. Yeah. Really. Whereas this feels like it's pushing Star Trek forwards. Into- That's what the Oval Season 3 felt to me as well. Like, they're both fantastic, it's I think. A, it's a good time. i got to catch up with that. I, I found the Oval Season 3, one of the things I really liked about it, and I hope gets brought into Strange New Worlds and other Star Trek more, is the Oval Season 3 really went for... You know you know that five-minute scene in uh, Star Trek Motion Picture of them just flying around the Enterprise going, isn't she pretty? Yes. For, like, five minutes. And it's a lot of this romanticism about space and the ship, and it's really, like... I, I must admit... I think that first episode of Orville pushes it too much for me. The first episode of the Orville is a bit too self-indulgent. It, t- it pulls it back a little There's bit. There's a massive dogfight against drones that you're like, why are they doing live fire rounds in a <laughs> in a space dock, for one thing? But this goes on for a long time, and it feels like a long time. 
the but the author I, one of the things I quite liked about the season, which I don't know if you will, but all the episodes they've just went okay. They're all an hour and twenty minutes. We're going to make them slow. We're going. I'm happy with not, that. I don't mind that. There's bits in it where you, I'm looking at going. They could have cut that section, but I think them keeping it slow and just making it feel thematically big and and grand and and romantic. I I really like. Yeah. Some people I saw criticized because I put a scene on Twitter being like, "This is amazing," and. A lot of people's criticism is like, it's really oversaturated. And I'm like, I like it being really oversaturated. <laughs> yeah. Was this the flying through the space cloud or nebula or mm. whatever it's called? Yeah, but it's beautiful. It was beautiful. It's, a, a, it's not a very complicated shot, really, at all. But it, the intent behind the shot, you can feel you can feel a lot of VFX artists just getting off to it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God, the ship looks so good. And they're like, oh, my God, I know. Don't we love the oven? Like, yeah, we do. And you can just feel it. I mean, it's probably just that. nice to imagine that a VFX artist just has a nice day given generally when they're in the news recently. It's because apparently the poor bastards are overworked and yeah. whipped by Disney. Yeah. But this is the thing, right? And when I watch Strange New Worlds, the, I mean, it's not a problem I have with Strange New Worlds. I think it does really good with it. The problem I have with a lot of modern Star Trek and most modern sci-fi is that it goes for darker, like visually darker, right? It's more realistic. I strong disagree with Strange New Worlds. No, no, no. I, I said just Star Trek generally, not Strange New Worlds. Like, oh, yeah. Prior to Strange. Yeah. It's been dark. And Strange New Worlds does make it brighter. Right? Especially the main sets, because they bothered with the actual original Enterprise colors. But it's still trying to pull it back a little bit versus, like, the 90s and the 60s, right? I mean, I would say before fine. I gave up on it, Picard was boring and grim and oh, dark. Picard's and terrible. I forgot yeah. Picard was even a thing. Awful. <laughs> awful. God awful. It just seemed to be quite miserable a show, really. It was. But this it is wasn't the thing, really the much or- like space or wonder or anything. No. no. But that's what the, I, the awful season three really feels like an almost aggressive overcorrection to that, but I'm fine with it. Yeah. They're just like, it's going to be bright and wondrous. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, what if it was grey and brown and all set on Earth and there was no spaceships? Oh. Uh, Look, it's 2024, it's LA. With some posters. And I'm like, yeah. Also, right. Oh, do you want to hear something? I, I read into this a bit. Did you watch season two of Picard, John? God, no. I didn't <laughs> okay. even make it to the end so, of season one. I did. In season two of Picard, there's an important note, right? There's an important continuity thing that I me and Daniel have questioned in a lot of people. In that Picard goes and sees Guinan in like 2024. Right? What we call uh, character. God, so horrible. And she doesn't <laughs> recognize him. Even though they met in the 1800s. That's a very well-established thing. Yeah. Well, in all fairness, I, I sometimes forget the faces of people I met last year. So I think that's no, forgivable. But in that episode, it's like Whoopi Goldberg's like, remember the first time we met? And Picard's like, yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, maybe. Because she remembers really well. And she doesn't even recognize the man at all, doesn't it? No. And the, 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 argument, the reason for that, the showrunners came out and said later on, was that because the universe they're in is so drastically changed... And the Enterprise never happened. They never went back in time to meet Whoopi Goldberg in the first place. So she wouldn't remember him. Then and I'm why like, was her bar called 10 forwards? Yeah, I had that question as well. But, but, <laughs> but this is the thing. The argument falls apart slightly because you have the fucking, you have the Star Wars fucking one with the whales. Punk on the bus who's like, oh, I remember being pinched by Spock. Choose one. Oh, yeah, I forgot he was in it. That guy's like, really it's like that bullshit hand wave they do in Doctor Who all the time, where they do something like the effect of, oh, well, now that we've changed the past, this didn't happen, but people sort of remember, and there's these little clues and shit. Genuinely, genuinely, the, the showrunner was like, oh, I think the punk might just remember a little, like, have a, a bit of a temporal remembering. Yeah, yeah, t- and t- temporal like, wibble, what? so that you can sort of, you can, it's, you can it's used the big stuff out of continuity, but characters sort of remember just, anyway. Just, so as, so as you can keep the character away. beat, but lose any of the I'd continuity like to cloud. interject with that mm. Doctor Who has a very odd way of canon, and yes. its way of canon is it has linchpin points throughout the the structure of the universe that are fixed points. It's like bunting being held up, and those but points it just will arbitrarily always picks happen. Which points are and aren't fixed? Yeah, that's fucking physics. Fuck you. That's how physics works. It just arbitrarily picked the speed of light. Like fuck you. You know, actually, like sometimes you know. even stuff that doesn't even matter that much is talking like fuck it, Vesuvius is now. It's like why? Vesuvius, the Vesuvius and Pompeii didn't in any way particularly affect even the fate of the Roman Empire is in the middle of. 
Why the fuck's that important to the fucking universe? Because it was actually like a to... spaceship that had crashed there and there were aliens and that could have spiralled out and wiped out Rome and Rome was kind of important. But it basically means that if you change anything that's not a fixed point, it can change and everything kind of gets back together and carries on. But if you change a fi- you, if you change a fixed point, stuff breaks and the universe doesn't like you very much anymore. And I think Brief note for as a well, stupid, stupid this dumb universe show that stuff. I adore, that is great. Fuck it, that's well, great. Yeah, for Doctor Who at work, but a, a key point in Star Trek. Uh, one of the key notes about Guinan is she. Uh, is she. It's been demonstrated many a time that when the when the world changes, she notices. <laughs> yeah. Best of both worlds. She's like, oh, this is wrong. Something's up here. Yeah, she, yeah. Like you took all the character beats of this very famous character. Went, nah. She's also nah. only there like half the time, if that. Like, she, <laughs> you know, everyone gets beamed off the ship by fucking Q and like Guinan's just knocking around being like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> What's going on? I hate the fucking show. And season three is going to be like, oh, we're getting all the cast back. Um, yeah, like, all cast back so we can kill them off like we did Data twice. Fuck you. I will say, even if t- t- season three is terrible, it was at least slightly worth it for that picture of Old Wolf. Yeah, I like Old Wolf. I'm not going to lie. Old Wolf. I'm, happy, I'm happy for Old Wolf. I miss Geordie without the visor, but, you know. Geordie with the I'll visor, take Old Wolf. Mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, what? Nice. You okay. said you miss Geordie without the visor. I like his visor. He currently has the visor, which he doesn't. I like his visor. I like Old Wolf with his white hair. And I'm being like, where's my Wolf show? Where's the Wolf show, everyone? I've just, Paramount. I've just been handed a massive That salad. does sound like a sitcom, the Wolf show. Sorry, what, he, by, that you didn't ask for by your by your. Yeah, are you bra right now, Rebecca? No. Ah, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scammed. Nice. I'm going to put that down because um, Ninja told me I'm not allowed to accept it. <laughs> nah, this is true. Have you dyed your hair yet, Daniel? Blue, yeah. How did you so know? Why isn't your hair blue? I think he'd explode. <laughs> what? What? I'd like to would see it. it. Why? Why would my hair be blue? Because because there you go. Just there is. Way to get famous. Not. Not. He see that. He didn't question why would his hair. Why would he explode? He questioned why would his hair be blue. <laughs> exactly. Because I'm worried about the explosion risk. Now you've raised it. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm like you know. I'm still worried about the fact I'm made of atoms. <laughs> what would you what rather if I be made of? What atoms with blue hair dye? What if it makes the atoms all come apart? What would you Fuck rather me. be made of? I just, I'd, I'd, I'd ra- I just, I'd rather. Actually, I was thinking about this. I'd rather oh, be God. made of ice. <laughs> what? I'd like to be made of ice. Why? Because, and this is probably not true, it's just a simple oh, diagram wow, to wow. help children understand science. But as I understand it, like, all right. So when, when like... When I know what you're going to say and you're wrong. Right. When also, steam is being steamed, the no, atoms are just pissed out all over the place, whatever. When wrong. it's water, they're still all sloshing about. They're next to each other, but like, you know, they're still sloshing about. But when water becomes ice, all the atoms like locked together in a proper rigid shape. And I'd feel no. better if I knew all my atoms were properly locked they, together they like Absolute ice. Absolute bullshit. That's not even more yeah. slightly There's happens. two elements of that, by the way, John, that you're wrong about. A. I'd just um, feel better if I was made of ice, okay? It's about the en- sorry. That's not about so the much en- right now because it is hot. I will grant you, and I that's would be about literally the energy melting. that's in them. Vaguely, no. and you don't fully. It's like if you heated water to, you'd have to heat, you'd have to freeze it to absolute zero for it to actually not have any more energy. Mm-hmm. Which is minus two hundred and seventy-three point one five. Degrees. So you're saying uh-huh. I need to have, I need to get like air conditioning in my house? Yeah, but B, there's still gaps between the atoms because because when you're talking about steam, well, yes, air, I like, know, but they're, they're, like as long as they're like really firmly holding hands. No, 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 no. You know, because <laughs> when, when we're talking about states of states of matter like that, we're talking about molecules, not atoms. John, really? Do you, do you, oh fuck! Do you sellotape your fridge magnets to your fridge just to be on the safe side? <laughs> Because that's what you're basically saying. Okay, I'm saying. going to be honest. I do have an extra magnet over the top of my fridge, my, my flat fridge <laughs> magnets to make sure they're secure, yes. John, if you wanted to have the least amount of distance between your atoms, you would have to be a neutron star. You I could be I'd the be a forbidden good neutron star. You could be the forbidden pasta. Is that John, like, wait, what is that like a black hole? Yes. Yeah, fuck a it. teaspoon of neutron star <laughs> is not? the weight of Mount Everest. I think I'd enjoy be I think I'd enjoy that. 
Mm. Like, you know, like if you had a choice between just being like, oh, I'm just one human and there's like fucking seven billion of us or whatever, or I could be a neutron star and wherever I went, I'd presumably destroy entire solar systems. I mean, you wouldn't be able to move or do anything. I think I'd rather be a neutron star. Your atoms would be so dense that you'd just be a ball of literally nothing, but... You'd be a big, dense ball of gas. Nothing would change, John. Actually, you wouldn't be big. You'd just be a very, very tiny, dense ball of... I, I think I just like the idea of being this really tiny point of matter that destroys everything around it. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't necessarily destroy everything around it, but, you know. Well, wouldn't I? Like, if there was a neutron star just, like, hovering over, like, say, Leeds, what would happen? Well, how how dense is it? Leeds, well, Barry! <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I sort of assumed it was a standard amount. Stand- What's a standard amount? I don't One know, neutron starry amount. <laughs> I mean, if you got, like, an actual neutron star that's just floating around the galaxy and put it near her, I mean, it'd fuck the whole solar system up, really. Oh, you see, that's that's what I want to be. I feel like I, I just... I just feel like I'd feel important if I was a star that wherever I went, I'd fuck shit up properly. Yeah, do you get dizzy, like... John? I do get, like, w- w- when? Well, if you were spinning. <laughs> I know this is going. <laughs> well, yes, and also, if I, like... If I'm, stand- if I'm in a high place looking down or if I'm in a low place looking up, Broadly, like if I'm just standing on the ground and looking at the stars occasionally, I feel dizzy. Yes, you can have a bad time as a neutral star. <laughs> okay, I can. Okay, yeah. All right, I can see. I can see where you're going with that. But if I was a star, like I'd be mm. in space and I could fly. Because I'd be oh, in that's space. Not... Stars can't fly, John. No. Well, the, well someone's keeping him up there. Up. Oh where? dear God. Oh no. <laughs> oh John. Oh please God. Please God. Please, God. Please, wait, hang I on. No, I no, don't no, want to no, deal with no, this today. no, no, no. Wait, wait. If I'm super on. dense matter, then what's happening is I'm not falling towards anything. Shit's falling towards me. Suddenly, yeah, I'm the center of gravity. Each other, John. So, if John. You, uh, I'm the center of gravity, all right? I'm not falling towards Leeds. Leeds is falling towards me. So, you're not flying then? No, I'm a fixed crashed. point in. Well, I'm a fixed-ish point in space. Nothing's a fixed point, John. If you if you get, uh, I'm going to fucking absorb the entire whole of Leeds and John, add it to my super dense mass. John, if, if you took a hair, oh of your yeah, head, you dro- yeah, fuck you, Leeds. Don't know what I've got against John, Leeds. I've brought Leeds please, like three times John, today. If you fuck you, hair, Leeds. If you dropped, if you took a hair off your head and dropped it to the ground, your hair is pulling on the earth. Also. Yeah, but not much. The Earth's pulling on the hair more, hence why yeah, it falls rather than the Earth coming other. up to meet my hair. Are we doing this bit where John doesn't know things? <sighs> no, this yeah. bit I do get. You, 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 you just said how does a neutron star fly? not fall? <laughs> well, I think stars... I think stars exert oh, more me. gravitational pull on shit around them than have exerted upon them because they're super dense and shit. And they got loads of mass and shit. Yeah, loads what? of mass and shit. That's what I wrote in my exams. Yeah, you, you didn't you just, do exams. You dropped you out before you got to them. Fall. You didn't do any fucking exams. <laughs> it more than fucking you. Oh shit, bitch! Classics on physics. Oh, I want to talk about classics. No, you don't. I do. <laughs> you don't know what classics is. He wants to talk about classical music, classics. and he's like, "That's the same thing." Classics. Yeah, it is classics. No, it's fucking not. It is classics. I want to talk about classical music, which is classic. No, it's okay, not. Okay, can I, can, I, can I ask a brief question? Yeah. Because most people equate classical music to just any orchestra music, which isn't actually what classical music is. Classical music is from a specific period. Oh. So when you say classical music. So I want to talk about the BBC's gaming proms. Oh, I okay. didn't like that. I didn't like it either, and I'd like to talk about why. So It's so fucking low-hanging fruit. It's low-hanging fruit that they missed. That's what pisses me off. They, Jesus Christ, oh, we're going to do Pokemon. Oh, what are you going to do out of the, you know, the entire soundtrack cross generation? Oh, we'll just do like the main theme of Gen 1 and the main battle theme from Gen 1. Yeah, and but then maybe like we'll do two minutes of Lavender thing. Town at the end. So, all right, but they well tried done, to make it you fucking idiots. Well, didn't... just just pick the just pick the first three th- songs that come to your head. Don't don't dig Sorry. into this at all. Did, sir, Jesus. did you just say bowel theme? Yeah, battle. Oh, I thought you said bowel. I, I just know. think that <laughs> say, geez, if you were literally picking a battle theme out of like Gen One, why the fuck would you just go for the generic? Field theme over the Gen 1 gym theme, which is the best gym theme in the entire franchise. Sing it for us, John. Huh? Sing it for us. Bump. Bump. 
Much better than the fucking so, generic battle theme. What was the gym really theme's great. Gym theme the... in theme one is the best gym theme in the franchise, and they didn't bother because they're idiots. What was wrong with the thing was actually it was just John on stage doing that for <laughs> an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> Admittedly, I think they should have cut my solo down below thirty minutes. They, I agree. It yeah, did go no, on they too definitely long. should have done yeah. that. So the weird thing about it was they took music. I thought they would take themes and stuff like that and give them like orchestral versions. If you've yes. got an orchestra, do that. But what they did Rather was deliberately they... make them try and sound like they yeah. were shitty eight-bit versions of themselves. And then they, and then they just did orchestral music. And they just got orchestral mm. music and went, aha, we've got these songs. And they made Shadow of the Colossus's fucking stuff way fucking worse. Yeah. Way fucking worse. Um, because they didn't have any of the interesting instruments that make that, or any of the singing that makes that uh, opening theme really fucking good. Also, they made it so much longer. I went back and timed it. Their version was 4 minutes 16 seconds, and the original song is 3 minutes 28 seconds. Mm. So that was a really slow, pondering version of a song that is kind of slow and pondering because of the point of the game, but just it was like, oh, God. They had a strangely small amount of music, given they had a huge intro, a huge outro, and multiple let's bring people on stage to talk sections. Yeah. There was surprisingly little music. I feel like if I'd bothered to make the trip to attend it live, I'd feel shortchanged. I was going to go, and then I went, ah, they probably fucked this up. So it opened up with like a nine minute loads of random little bits of game, and every now and then you're like, oh, I know that. And that was all right. Mm. That was all right. And then, then it was Zelda. Then it was it? Zelda because, of course, you go. Da, 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 but that was just. Da, 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 it was a very generic. Yeah, just the same. The same composition they used for like the Hyrule Symphony. Yeah. Uh, like for the anniversary. So that was a bit like okay, yeah. fine, whatever. Bit lazy. Then they did Pokemon Echo the Dolphin and Secret Secret of Mana all in one. Yeah. Which wasn't great because that Pokemon eight bit thing did not sound good. <laughs> No, and, and it was. Of, I think it, it was. I think it was a bad, a lazily bit, chosen yeah. selection of songs as well. Yeah. Then they did Final Fantasy Seven. No, eight. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Of course it was because it's not the. They specifically said, "Oh, people think more of seven. So we do. Well, if people think more of seven. Why don't you just do fucking do seven? seven. Idiot? Just, just then, do seven. People then, remember seven more. Then they ruined Shadow of the Colossus, and then I fell asleep through Kingdom Hearts. And then Journey. Then they did a really, really long journey. Really long journey. Like they went, that was like 10, 15 minutes. They could have beat the game in that fucking time. It was long. Mm. And I was like, I don't know this music. I don't like this game. Uh, and then, they, the then their big finale was What Remains of Edith Finch. No, you missed out the worst bit. The oh, never-ending Battlefield 2042 soundtrack. Oh, that, I skipped that. I was so bored I skipped it. Which who is... the fuck? Th who the fuck were thinking? Okay, what's what's the classic music in video games? And they go, oh yeah, Battlefield 2042. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Daniel likes Daniel likes that game. I don't. He's uh, the only person. I I love that game. I could the soundtrack for me for that game is people going, ah, someone's just crashed a jet into me. Ah, ah, ah. That's the soundtrack. That's that's how it. Okay, the dogs don't love my impression. Oh, it's a bad soundtrack. <laughs> bad soundtrack. <laughs> Lilith, what are you chatting about? You big fool. Admittedly, I'd be I'd be that annoyed if I was in that. If I was stuck in that room with you and you were like, <laughs> I'd, I'd be very. There was all stuff like, like there. Let me leave. They were like crinkling tissue paper and spinning a big drum full of rocks and shit. And I did like, see uh, someone appear to be holding what looked like just a Sainsbury's. Yeah. Shopping bag, which yeah. they were crinkling to make crinkly noises, yeah. which was fucking hilarious. Like, there's so many really interesting. Like, if you want to just do the straight orchestra bits, do the fucking Uncharted theme first and foremost, because that is an amazing piece of music. Do yeah, I was just, I was just literally think, just sitting there during parts of it, thinking, okay, where are like, where's Red Dead Redemption? The yeah. original Red Dead Redemption in yeah. has some incredible, incredible music I mean, in it do that you could have with it. And like no, re I mean, okay, fine, it's a little overexposed and a bit overdone now. But Toby Fox, yeah. where's where's Undertale? Yeah. Everyone knows and loves it. Fine, it's maybe been a bit <laughs> overdone and become a bit of a meme, but it's still very good. <laughs> Megalophania orchestra version would have been fucking rad to hear. Yeah, that would have been really good if they did a really composition. Like if you're looking for older games, where's like say Chrono Cross, Metal Gear Solid. Um, 
you know, I, I found it really odd that after they did, like, the late 90s Japanese RPGs, they then skipped forward to, right. like, did they, the did early they do... 2010s. Like, nothing happened in the did noughties. They, did they not Japanese. do any Contra? No. Huh? No. They didn't no, do any no, Contra. No Mass Effect. No Banjo-Kazooie. I think um, Contra's, like, the, like, I think some of those Contra themes are the best game music of all time, and they didn't do any? No. No. Nothing. Those they skip. They, they, they did so little. It's ri- no Silent Hill. Yeah. It's no, no Silent Hill or Resident Evil. Like it might have been fun to do like a really brief like snippet of say, um, the safe room, the safe room theme from Resident Evil. You know, Very it would be good. really fun. Do the Wii Shopping Channel thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some of the Wii music is brilliant. Some of that build some, some of, of that little into incidental. It. Wii, like Nintendo does really good incidental music. Orchestral KK Slider. Yeah, brilliant. All these Do it. really good, and it just felt like I mean, yeah, when your finale is fucking dear Esther. <laughs> what really? <laughs> You're like, oh god. Yeah. Anyway, what uh, remains of Edith Finch? But the point stands. I thought there was dear Esther in there as well. There might have been Katamari the Damacy. Oh. That would have been fun. Bear Katamari Damacy in there. Yeah. Even like some stuff that's like you know uh, I don't know like maybe like even some of my Minecraft turn a bit of Minecraft. I, I mean they could have done. They, did like. they do any GTA themes? No, I don't think so. No, because like the GTA Four theme, I think it's a good theme. Yeah. Fuck oh, deadly premonition. They could have done some deadly premonition. Some of the I mean, fucking sweary stuff. Oh, but orchestral G- G- version of fucking San Andreas. Yeah, yeah, but like, uh, but four's an easier one, I think, for an orchestra to do. I mean, I'd like San Andreas. I just but like, feel like we've been one. sitting here bitching for ten minutes, and we've come up with a better lineup than they managed to put together for an actual gaming prom. I think it's just because they missed such a big chunk. It was like Pokemon, Zelda, Echo the Dolphin, Space Bar, Space Bar, Space Bar, Space Bar, Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> they missed just that huge middle chunk. Like the you know the majority of the PS One and PS Two, they just were like, nah, we don't need. I've got, like, I have orchestral albums of gaming music. Yeah. Like, it's a thing that's really easy. People it's... just really love getting an old school theme and giving it a really epic... The moon theme from DuckTales! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Why the was the moon theme from DuckTales, you dicks? Well, you yeah. know how in DuckTales Remastered, they actually did a full orchestral they score They did, the and it was theme. actually really good. It's fantastic. Really fun. Yeah, Smashing like people song. enjoy hearing old music they're nostalgic for, but jazzed up into super awesome new epic orchestral versions. And they didn't do that. They said, "I know, let's deliberately get obscure, kind of shitty instruments in to try and recreate the original shittiness levels." Yeah, let's obscure recreate shit- needless wait. boundaries created by technology that's wait, wait, no wait, longer wait, a problem. Wait, what do you mean, obscure shitty instruments? Like, I have no context that, that, for this thing. I didn't watch it. So I huh? damn, <laughs> I have no context for this thing. I didn't see it. So. They had like a weird little kind of like, I don't even know what it is. It would, it looked like a piano, but it was weirdly bleepy bloopy. So an electric keyboard. Like an electric honky tonk piano. Yeah. I think yeah. Like, they brought in specialist equipment to sound worse. Yeah. And then, but they didn't really instrument to fucking shove the glasses, which makes it sound so good. No, I'm not familiar with the. I know I'm not familiar enough with the Shadow of the Colossus um, themes. No, precisely what instruments they should have been using. I have no idea. I don't know music. (laughs) I know you just know it didn't sound right. Yeah, it's all like they always do that. Rather than rather than make a specific score, because rescoring something is difficult. It does take a lot of time, especially for an orchestra. Even if it's an already done theme, rescoring it and making an original, an actual individual piece of sheet music for all the instruments is incredibly time consuming. But if you already have the melody laid out, and it's quite actually filling that out, well, it's it's kind of a lot of work, but not creatively, if that makes sense. Like it's a yeah. lot of grunt work, but it's not I feel it's like not we should, difficult. however, before we put together the gaming proms on the BBC, have found someone who could do that work. Yes, I would agree with that statement. Yeah, I'll do it. I could. I wouldn't mm. fuck it up as much as they did. I'd put mm. Halo in there. I'd have everyone. I put along. treasure trove code from Banjo Kazooie. You can't stop me. Have it. Fucking have it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I you see, I did what they did there. I deliberately blooped it down back to eight bits. I like, I like the break it's the your happiest, voice there. sunniest um, theme. It's lovely. There was, no, there was a Tetris. 
Give me That's a Russian-inspired Tetris piece. How much of that do you think was copyright-related? No. So I imagine a lot well, of studios they used would just be like, no. Nintendo yeah, themes, Pokemon, so... Zelda, all the fucking. If, if you're using Nintendo shit, you're not scared about <laughs> you know someone giving you a takedown because no, that, that Nintendo, would be what But that's Nintendo what I'm saying. Nintendo do. might have they might have gotten a thing from Nintendo, but not from like fucking Microsoft, or not from fucking like they might have only got it from certain developers who own a certain car. Maybe that's why it was a bit possible. short. That by the end, Nintendo's lawyers would be hammering on the door, and they wouldn't be able, <laughs> they'd be able to hold it hold, hold it closed with the barricade so long. <laughs> Right, everyone out the back. Nintendo are here. Fuck it, run. Why did we spend 15 minutes on fucking Journey? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was it weird. Thing? It was stuff I knew and stuff that wasn't good. And I mean, stuff some I of it was good. fine, but I did find myself skipping through more of it than I expected. Yeah, same. Especially Battlefield. Oh, yeah. That was just like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Like, I, I literally thought, you know what, I have I kind of put it on an iPlayer, and I thought, you know what, I've got to, you know, incredibly exciting, I, I've got to clean the kitchen today, all right? <laughs> I want to tidy everything up, I want to scrub down all the surfaces, I want to put on some really good video game music just in the background that I can listen to nice and louder while I'm doing that. And I kept going over to skip forward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a worrying sign. I was writing with it on, so I was like, oh, it won't have any words in it. Some prick comes on and is like, hello there, I'm going to talk about some music. Ha ha, for jokes. Okay, they, did so they were like, oh, what's your favourite starter? Oh, is it a Bulbasaur? Or uh-huh. Oh, kill me. So hang on, so wait, so I know a lot of people listen to video game music a lot when they do stuff, and I'm assuming you two do. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't at all. I'm listening to video game and... music right now. Well, I, 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 for some reason, outside of the very, a very rare thing... I, I, I often don't enjoy video game music removed from the context of the video game. That's weird. It's very rare. Mm. Maybe you're wrong. Because I always feel like they... No, I'm not saying it makes them bad. Like, it's, for me personally, I just... I think the whole context of the entire vibe of the game world you're in and everything sort of... I, I, for, for, for the music to really hit me, I need that other bit of context. Ah, you see, I'm literally the reverse of that. Which makes me question how much I actually like video games, um, <laughs> because like I can, if I like, um, like say you know, ever see footage of uh, gameplay, but say I've got to mute it because say you know something else is going on, I can't have the the noise on. I, I really struggle to get into it, like you know, or say I've got to uh, disable the music because I'm about to say stream something, and I know a fact it's going to be uh, it's going to cause trouble, so I need to actually turn the music off. Like I, I really struggle to enjoy it a lot of the time, but if I listen to video game music on it. And I'm like, yeah, all right, let's fucking go. Let's save the world and shoot Saren and get these blocks lined up so that they fall in the correct pattern. I can get myself prop out to the video music. I think, wait, do I actually like video games? Do I just like video game music? Well, and the video the game question, happens John? to just keep me entertained as, the, as an excuse for, to listen to it. The question becomes, when you played Stray, did you just sit and listen to that shitty fucking chiptune music for that you gave to that fucking guy? No, I listened to like one song, then I got bored, and then I, I collected all the other pieces because I'm an idiot, but I never actually gave them to him because I didn't want to bother yeah. listening to them. I yeah, didn't Stray. like Stray very much. Me neither. I enjoyed Stray. It had a char- It had its own charm. It had a charm, but that's all it had. It had. So let's go back to what Matt said earlier that I don't like games without a challenge. I don't like games that pr- they seem to be offering a challenge but aren't. That's yeah, I don't like the falsity me. of it. Yeah. So Kirby, the new Kirby game, I, I played the demo. I was like, this is just not fun. Is that, the one say, where, is that the one with the cars? Because I don't like it. Yeah. I will say it's, with Kirby, I played it. through that and it does get progressively, progressively harder. And then some of the challenges at the end are incredibly difficult. Like I, mean, I yeah, have not I been really able to do one of the challenges. But like Stray is fun. just, Stray was, it just was, there's no challenge to it. And I was like, this is an adventure game. They've tricked me into yeah, playing an adventure game. game and I don't like adventure games. It doesn't, that's the, it really well, it's an explorey game. Sometimes the areas can be a bit complex. You've got to, you know, explore the them and I... understand what's in the area no, and but observe it did, them properly. It did a thing, right? So, like, it's a different a bit... kind of challenge. So, I, I like a. I'm going to use the term walking through that. I like a game that's just narratively focused. I can enjoy that, right? I, I liked Ethan Carter and I, I liked Firewatch and stuff like that, right? So a game that is, you know, my one of my games of the year last year was. Um, uh, that's the name of the game. Um, Good, I liked it. Artful Escape, which, oh, yeah. as I'm sure John will know, doesn't really have much gameplay going for it. You're just sort it's of got the vibing. occasional boss fight, where which is basically you've just got to. It's Simon says. Do, it's Simon says. Yeah. Yeah. There's no real fairness there. It's not challenging. The whole 
game is just meant to be a kind of four hour vibe and then you're done you're like that was a fun vibe and that's it sort of thing it is it is vibes the video like game. um genesis noir very little yeah. challenge just things to kind but of admittedly. occupy yourself with a bit like windowsill Genesis uh, Noir does beautiful. have some very light puzzles, whereas as, as Artful Escape has no puzzles at all. It oh. is just you're just you're just sliding around. Yeah. Um, it's it's it, there's no challenge to it at all, but it, it doesn't it doesn't imply that in any of its gameplay. The entire implication of the game is just about personality. That's the theme of it. It's about finding your personality and finding what you like and finding your stage personality and just enjoying these lovely, beautiful worlds. But and Stray. If it was just doing that, I would have enjoyed it more. But as Daniel says, it sort of like gives this illusion of like, oh, it's oh, it's again. I'm like, no, just, just commit to the being a vibe or be challenging. Don't be this intermediate thing, which I doesn't do commit. Because you get to this. But a, don't a bit you, where need, you, you need an, ele an element of the narrative can be the protagonist is in danger, even if the danger is actually quite modest. Hmm. Well, that that that's, that could be a. You mean sometimes you need in your story part of the narrative to be threat. But there, there is threat anyway, those things that jump on you, but it's just like, you're just running and it's a bit awkward. I mean, th there's one bit in the game that I got to it and went, oh, is it going to get good now? Like, it's finally opening up where you get to this sort of like mid-level city that's actually quite big. Um, and it's all neon, it's very pretty. And I got there and went, oh, is this where it's going to, like, was that, other, was that other bit just sort of like establishing thing and now it's got to open up a bit. And it made it seem like you had to kind of explore and find stuff, but there was... There's only ever sort of one solution to every single puzzle. There's no real figuring it out. They kind of go, this is how, what you do, and you just sort of do it, and you don't feel like you figured anything out. I don't and... feel like you act like a cat. No, well, that's part of the problem. I think early on, when you start the game, you're just kind of a cat, and I'm like, cool, I'm just a cat fucking about, right? Poor but as shit, it gets yeah. on, I'm like having conversations with people. I'm like, I'm a fucking cat. Yeah. I don't care. It is questionable to what extent the robot is potentially remote controlling the cats. Yeah. There's a... There's what? a... I, honestly, if you... They could have been, done the exact same game and just been a bit more clever with it by having stuff like food and things in the areas. So you, you're not... It's like, find the safe behind the bookshelves. Why the fuck is a cat trying to find a safe? Into the was, code. If With there what? was like a smell and you could track smells or something like that, and you've got, oh, there's a smell, and then you're, you know, you it didn't commit to being a thing. cat much, did it? It would have been anything. Be, it would be quite a hilarious comedy if every single major event there just also happened to be a sardine present in the same room, <laughs> safe, etc. And then that's all the cat's interested in, just wants the next sardine. Yeah, okay. That's the thing. It it sort of used the cat as just a kind of player character, but if the if you weren't a cat, the story could be the same. You would be able to jump. You wouldn't be able to jump as high. No, but like you could, in theory, be fucking anything. You could be a rat. You could be a mouse. You could be a guy. Like you'd have to maybe change the designs of the world very slightly, but like narratively and thematically, you'd get the same thing. With well, the, and I'm like, the narrative that I would have gone through was already in the game of you've lost your friends. And yeah, as you really go through this, thing. as you go through this, like I change the opening. So your friends go through the town thing first and you get sort of held back and have to go a longer way. So you're just following the smells of your friends. So that's what your drive is, is yeah. you're tracking down the other cats. And in doing that, Mm. You accidentally end up saving the people. Complete accident because you're a cat. Yeah. I just presume that because this is the future and there's clearly been an apocalypse, the cats were exposed to radiation, so they're intelligent super cats. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. I didn't feel the game didn't really make me feel like a cat at all. <laughs> you really feel because like it. did early get... on. There's lots of like you know scratching and sleeping on cushions. Uh, yeah, and shit. but well, you say that, but and like, knocking I don't... shit off high places just to be a dick. Well, I go into a thick, but I kind of wish knocking shit off high places because sometimes that's part of the narrative, but it's like, I kind of wish I could just cause like vague annoyance and chaos and that would somehow work. Mm. But I, I think that should be the solution, just being a... I, so you I mean want an untitled goose game yeah, except you're accidentally honestly. saving the world from nightmare fascist robots at the same time? Yeah, yeah, because like, you know, I'm walking around and like there's one interact button, right? And I'm like, I'm always pressing it. And so I'm like, oh, what's this interact button? And it fucking gets down. I was like, I'm just going to sleep. I'm like... Get up and get up. I'm looking. For, it's like, you know, like, you know, I'm trying to climb up a thing and there's like three things and the fucking contextual jump button's only got one thing at a time. So my camera's like fucking one pixel off from the thing. And it's like, oh, you're jumping down. Now. I'm like, go up. And it's like, oh, oh, where am I going? 
Mm. I, 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 I thought the theming was great, and it just doesn't do enough with its gameplay to make the theme. It, it feels like it feels like the gameplay and the theme were designed completely independently. I think and this would be like... more of a problem if it was a longer game, but I think it's sufficiently short. It doesn't outstay its welcome. It's a fun little experiment. I'm fine with that. Yeah, but I thought that. But I, didn't I kept playing it. it, and I haven't finished it. I think I've played it for about five hours, and I'm not done. And I've, I've and I'm sort of like playing it, going, "This is getting up." Because Awful Escape, if it was any long, because Awful Escape for like three hours. If mm. Awful Escape was any longer than that, I wouldn't like it. It's it's very it's it's quite succinct, and it you can do it in one fairly short sitting, um, and you should really do it in one short sitting. I think that's kind of it's it's more it's more structured like you're watching a movie. <laughs> Um, but the there's a weird thing in Artful Escape because because it's because the theme is about like finding what your whole character and David Turner is. You get the character creator at the end of the game, oh, like that's weird. almost right right at the end. It's like oh now you have a vibe. What do you want your vibe to be? Because it's about finding who you want to be, and it's about sort of vaguely layering that over the time. You and it. yeah. But it commits to the theme. It doesn't really... The gameplay is just... You kind of slide and you have to jump occasionally. And it's kind of like... You're just sort of doing it to vibe. Yeah. And Stray just... I'm like, but if you if you could have structured it... Because before you get the robot, I actually think it's pretty succinct. Hmm. It's like you're just kind of just jump... You're just kind of wandering about. <laughs> the funny thing about the Artful Estate, by the way, is if you refuse to engage with it. Because you're blatantly supposed to be sliding around and holding down the... What's the game? Guitar button, called? yeah. The, what, the shred the button. button. The shred button. If you just refuse to touch the shred button, you just slide around and shit doesn't happen in the background and the music's very muted and you're just sliding <laughs> and it's actually hilarious. Oh, it's... It's, but that's it's the, thing, the funny... Think... If you just refuse to shred, it's so funny because shit just doesn't happen. And you kind of, you've kind of got this real sensation that the game desperately wants you to push the button so it can trigger the rainbow whales to jump out from behind the mountain. You just, nope, not doing it. Well, that's what I like because it's a game. I'm just gonna slide. It's a game that if you you kind of have to want the vibe to get it, and if you Mm. don't, well, it's not for you, sort of thing. And I'm fine with that. It's not a game for everyone. And Stray, it got so. I don't know. Did you did you play it on PS5? Both of you? No PC. I can't remember. So oh, PS5, PS3. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. I had on PS5. It had loads of frame drops. Oh, I didn't get that on PC. I don't remember. Yeah, PC was up. I didn't play a lot. Because I, I'd be going around and occasionally it'd just be like, okay, I'm 20 now for like 30 seconds. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you <laughs> and I am convinced, I am convinced it's something to do with the, the, them changing the heat sinks. No, because you know how after the launch model PS5, they like shrunk the heat sink in half? Yeah. So my PS5 is the heat sink and it's half the size of the one that Daniel has. Ah, suck a dick, bitch. And I am, because <laughs> there, there was some digital fire tests and they were like, oh, it doesn't impact it. But I'm like, but surely there's something that will. And I'm wondering if it's that, because that's the only difference I could find. Because obviously it's a console game, it should be consistent. Um, Maybe uh, you just, just that shit at playing games that they put the frame rate down so they see you less often. Yes, probably. I did buy it on PC because a lot of people said it's really good. One of my friends, he's like, oh, it's my game of the year. And I'm like, really? And I, <laughs> oh, like, you I need to, to unfriend to somebody right there. Admittedly. Oh, yeah. right. There's no way Admittedly. near my game of the year, no. but I think it's pretty good. Which so, is, of so, course, so this... let's just say this now, Elden Ring. Elden Ring, Elden yeah, Ring, correct. Yeah, the guest, just to be clear, ever, this friend is also the one that was like, no, Horizon Zero Dawn's really good. No, Days Gone's really good. It's my game of the year. And I'm like, mm. well, I like Days Gone. I'm not a fan of Horizon, but Days Gone was all right. Mm. Days Gone, I can't get past the intro because it's too fucking funny. And it's not, and it doesn't want to be. <laughs> well, the the wedding where he's in his biker jacket or some shit. No, the hell, the heli- I just, I can't get past the fucking helicopter. <laughs> it's like, okay, how do we solve this complicated problem of who gets in the helicopter? It's There's a- only two seats where we'll put one person in. <laughs> it's. A- I love you too much, bro. It's a beautiful... But what if you's injured? <laughs> Get in the fucking helicopter! I'm sorry that the power of broship isn't going to unstab you! <laughs> I couldn't get through the fucking intro of Days Gone. It's too fucking funny. It's, it's alright, Days Gone. I'm not... Uh, uh, it's yeah, fine. I played it. I enjoyed it. I don't think I finished it. But I didn't Where's bounce I... off and go, oh, this is horrible. I just, you know, other well, shiny things came along. It's a weird thing. Since that new PS Plus update came out and, like, you know, some PS5 games went... We're free on it. Yeah. Games 
because the PS5 only has a few exclusives. It's got like five. I was going to say Spider-Man, but I'm literally playing out my Steam Deck at the moment. So. Well, yeah, but like, so, but, but, wait, so is that we... on PC? I thought it wasn't out till like, tomorrow. Aha, uh -huh, suck a dick, Sony love me, what up? Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> no, but even so, right. Like... Ah, now you know what date this was recorded. It runs very, <laughs> very well on the Steam Deck. As in, I'm only running it at 30, because I only run anything on 30 to try and minimize the fucking sound. Notably, the um, review guide featured Steam Deck information, which I thought was I interesting. I did like that, yeah. The Steam Deck's definitely becoming... I love my fucking Steam Deck. That's such a good bit of kit. But, right, so, oh. Spider-Man... Is on the PS4 as well, oh, as yeah, is Miles yeah. Morales. Yeah, 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 you're right. Um, Horizon Forbidden West is also on the PS4. Yep. The, there's, I think there's only two games which are only PS5, which is Ratchet and Clank and Returnal. Demon Souls. And de well, Demon Souls, yeah. Which I guess is it's a remake, but I guess it's its own. Game. It's definitely it's a heavy yeah. remake. Yeah, it it's a weird game. So um, it's those three games. It's no right? Elden Ring. I think it's on... more than that. I want to say PS5 exclusives only PS5 exclusives. I want to say there's at least two more. Wait, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna that's do the it thing. Well. A lot of the games I think of because Gran Turismo Seven also on PS4. Yeah, but that's like, a lot shit. of games are also on PS4, which makes the sort of so when I was trying to think about it, it's only those three, and I, I the only one I played is Ratchet and Clank, which is obviously fantastic. Astros and, Playroom. Okay, Astros. Yeah, Astros. There you go. Fine. Four. And Astros was fantastic, as was Ratchet and Clank, and I didn't get the other two. Uh, but they're both on the new PS Plus. And fuck me, if I'd paid £70 for a turn, I'd be fucked off. Jesus Christ, £70? <laughs> Super for that? It's just the most boring fucking thing. Of it. What the fuck is that? £70? I've not played Returnal. £70? That's a, that's a £30 game at best. It's, £70. Returnal's a fucking weird one, because it's like, what if we were a really hard roguelike in a way that isn't fun? <laughs> Yeah. It's and like it's boring and so, there's no theme to it. It's what well, it is a theme. It's secretly a shoot 'em up and I've never been keen on shoot 'em ups because you have to look at a trillion different things. It's not like watching one dude do a wind up and rolling behind him and slapping his ass about. It's probably like a million bullets in a million different directions and you've got to kind of get through it. And but I got see, when that's you why say I like... shoot 'em up. Do you mean bullet hell? Yeah, that kind of yeah, shmup. Right, because those but, are different things. Well, hang on, just to quickly establish, right, because if we're talking about our sort of roguelites, because my favourite's Hades, which is very bullet hell. Do you enjoy um, Hades, yeah? Finding of Isaac. It's not bullet hell, to be honest. It's not bullet hell. Oh, I mean, it, oh, 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 <laughs> when you put the uh, the pact of punishment on, um, oh, oh, mm, oh, it mm, becomes bullet hell, I assure you. <laughs> I don't know, what's, what's I, I've gone pretty high up the pact of punishment. I would not... I would not call Hades a bullet. I've, hell. I've been trying to get 32 pack of punishment and it's. An, oh my god. Oh my god. I can't it's, remember what level I've got up to. Oh I've finished god, the I'm game and stopped out. playing because I like the ending. That's fair. It's I mean, Lamb, which, good. which ending are you referring to? The one after you do something 10 times. Did the credits roll? I can't remember if credits are. I think credits. If there's credits of roll, I think that's yes, that's yeah. as there's, good there's, as the end. There's ending. the there's the normal ending and then there's like the later ending, which I, I like the game, but I know. You know, a game like Binding of Isaac isn't like that's a bit slower and whatever. And Returnal's trying to kind of, it's, it wants to have the speed of Hades with the kind of, it had no theme. Yeah, just, whenever, the I think, is... whenever I think of a, a roguelite, it's always very thematic. Like Hades has, is really thematic, as is Binding of Isaac. And Returnal was just like, everything was quiet and dark. And when you're <laughs> doing a really big, the, the problem is that because they, you're doing bullet hell in 3D, you need enemies to move around in big areas. And so that meant that there was lots of big areas all clumped together, and it all it, it just felt like the areas were so repetitive so quickly. Like Binding mm. of Isaac's got tens of thousands of fucking rooms now, um, and each one you go into, it always feels like you know you might see some that you re you recall and you see, but you're not going to see them that often. Whereas with Returnal, the little time I played it, I'm like I know all of this. Also, it's long. Like a run of that game takes ages. Yeah, and you can't and when do I check what my middle? maximum my maximum figured Hades is? Um, <laughs> Wait, the pack of punishment before you leave. It's 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 at yeah, the, but it varies uh, by weapon, doesn't it? No, pack of punishment is what you get at the very end to make it harder, and you can add packs on. I mean, you can lower it and up it as you want, but I, I I've been trying to get thirty two because that's the, that's to get the final the final statue, the final scaly statue is thirty two. I, I, I think it's I think it varies weapon to weapon. 
Because I've got the blade, and right now it's telling me only I need heat five, and I've definitely done way more than heat five. Oh, I, no, think it, I think it's no, different no, for weapons. No, no, no. Each, each, you, you get rewards for individual weapons based on which pack of punishment you have. So you can, you, the, the score, if you look, you, you see that's like the max. Like it's telling you, me bow fill heat gauge to 17. No, that's the max you've done with that weapon. Yeah, but what you have the heat, the, the, what, what heat level you have set is the same regardless of which weapon you're using. I sense. think it, it sounds like somewhere around... Look, I need to check every... I, I think it's about 20-ish. Well, you would, need, you would need to check every weapon. It's just whatever's set on the settings when you look at it. Yeah, but it's set low because I think I was... Last time I played, it must have been grinding a particular weapon. I say it, it gets... At 32, it's... The steam... There's The switch lags at 32. Yeah, I've, I've got all the statues before the 32 statue. Yeah, that's... So I think, I, think I got to somewhere... I think I was about like 20-ish. Yeah, that's it's it's not too bad hell there, but did I play this game? I have no idea what the fuck you're all talking about. <laughs> it is. Hades, you, you must have played Hades. I did. I got Jesus. the good ending. I got the ending. No, pack the pack, pack, pack punishment stuff is like you get that after the the, the sec the proper second ending. Yeah. Oh, then I um, I stopped playing it. There's a credits later on. Like there's. I did it, the it proper going. ending. I got the ending ending, and I'm not sure I've got the ending ending ending. Oh god! There's, there are like three endings. <laughs> it is. I think I've, I think I've got ending I two. Don't I, think, I haven't got me, ending three. I loved Hades, but I didn't think it had a huge amount of replayability once you'd beaten it. I felt like I it was done. I disagree. I, I disagree. disagree. I don't know. It's a I, lovely game. Just sit down with for an hour. And I like the progression of just. I like the progression of building up your house and I'm getting friends with everyone. And I, I like that because that's something I think is lacking a back. Yeah, from, but I felt Isaac. like I did all that. And Isaac I just feels like any all the runs, I've no idea what I'm going to end up as. But Hades, I know. That was a big problem with Returnal. Is you play it for fucking three or four hours, one run, and then you just die. And you're like, oh, okay. And then the next run, you're basically the exact same fucking character again. Yeah. It just, Returnal was shit. I really did not like Returnal. But literally, though, I can't... Because I tried Demon Souls Returnal. Returnal is so fucking dull. It's not even that it's bad. It's dull. That, yeah. And I think that's more offensive, if anything. It's just dull. It has no... It literally... It literally it, each run is hours long. Yeah, and you can't pause Way it. Way too long. You and can't pause you it can't, and you can't save mid-run. No, because it's like, fuck your time. Um, <laughs> and then I tried Demon Souls. I like Demon Souls. Good. It's a great Ish, game. But, I mean, I can't I, I go back to it because Elden Ring's the best game ever made. So, you know, there's... Uh... Well, th well, this is my problem, but it's something I'm constantly jealous of both of you for because I just... I, I do not like Souls-likes. I mean... I keep trying. I, beat, I can't. I beat Elden Ring and I'm gone back for a second playthrough. Not like a, a carry-on lap of honour. New Game Plus. I'm not doing New Game Plus. I'm doing a brand new mm. game starting from scratch. And yeah, it... I've done that several times before finishing my first game. Oh, I see. I know I finished it, and now I'm like, right, I know how the game works now. And the second time is really satisfying as well. But Elden found... Ring is my new Skyrim. Because uh, Skyrim I used to go back yeah. to all the time and just kind of do the first 10 hours or something and just do a new playthrough of that. And now <laughs> I do that with Elden Ring it's... a lot. I found in the opening area... I found in the first sort of three hours of playing, I was like, have I kind of seen it all, have I done it all? In the opening area, I found a whole village I hadn't found in the first run and a whole boss that I hadn't found in the first run. And I was like, all right, okay, fair enough. Honestly, I'm impressed if that you only missed one boss in the entire game because the fuckers are hiding everywhere. I know, that was just the... There's like, if you go up on one of the ruins at night, a death bird turns up and I hadn't found that. Yeah. Which was a real good uh, surprise. When you I'm talk sure about I've missed this, several of the, so cool. the Knights Cavalry who only show up at night. I'm uh, sure I must have missed several of them. They're great fun, they are. Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I, the first playthrough I was magic, and then I went to dexterity and strength, and I went through about 50 builds trying to beat fucking Melania. Melania, Mel what's her name? She says it every time, but I, it took me 270 goes to beat her. Mikella, Mikwali, uh, Mikwali. Yeah, it's Melania, Melania, something like that. You see, I'm, I'm happy to live stream Mikwala. it, and if, I, if it fucks, and if the whole thing takes and takes more than a few attempts, I'm not making pro Yeah, fuck it. Chat, j jump in, help. Here's, here's Daniel, the summon symbol. <laughs> Daniel did three entire fucking three hour I'm happy streams for my just community doing to help that one do fucking it. boss. Yeah, I did. Literally. It took me a long time to beat her. Um, but I'm now, I'm doing a, just a, a, I've put every point into strength. And I found a colossal sword that I, I don't think I had in my first playthrough. That is just, it's I literally called like the fucking, the big bastard sword of death. It's not called that. It's, it's this big sword I found in Kaelid and it is amazing. And I'm literally just jumping and scrushing everybody. And if I jump and don't insta-kill people, I'm like, no, fuck. <laughs> and if it's the nippy, I can't kill them. It's great fun. I'm having a great time. 
That game I do amazing. enjoy the faith builds. The faith builds. Never done the faith build. That's my next one. I'm gonna go. Faith, for faith is build. so far. To, I just think you get like I think intelligence magic is more reliable damage output, but faith has got the more wild, wacky fun shit. Yeah, yeah I've seen some of the stuff, and I'm like, holy, sh that's amazing. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of game there still. I mean, a bit eighty five hours to beat it. And there was big chunks I didn't. I know I didn't do. Um, once I finished it, I was like, oh, I forgot this place. Oh, I forgot this place. So I'm trying to do more of a collecting. I'm still not looking at any guides or anything. Um, so I'm just kind of using knowledge I had in the first place to follow and see if I can complete quests a bit more. Hmm. Um, which I probably won't be able to do. I don't really understand how I'll ever do the quest in that game. But maybe I'll just stumble upon it on my like 50th playthrough and I'll be like, oh, of course. Um, but it, it truly, it genuinely, really, truly is the best fucking game ever made. Because it's I pure game. It's dense, pure, adventure video game. It reminds me of being a kid playing uh, A Link to the Past. It's just got all of that sort of proper adventure feel to it. And it doesn't... As much as it's got, like, repeating bosses and stuff, it never feels like it's repeating because it's always throwing new tricks and shit at you. I had, I had new gameplay mechanics being added to that game literally, like, you know, an hour or two before the end. Whole new gameplay things were like, oh, here you go, fuck it, do this now. Like, what, what? So the thing I struggle with with Souls like is that is what frustrates me. I struggle with that almost aggressive open endedness. Yeah, I mean, you... I know you. I, I've always, I've always been jealous of you, Daniel, especially because you are the kind of person to just go into a sandbox and have fun with. I cannot. I need more structure. I've been I playing just... a lot of Saints Row. <laughs> I've got a, I've got an unfinished version of Saints Row that was supposed to have deactivated it, but I uh, stopped it updating. Um, so I could keep playing it. So I'm just, I just bomb around in that world, wingsuiting and having a good time. It's an but that's it. incredible I, fun I, game. I, just Cause is the epitome of that because I remember Just Cause Four just cause is 4, in a lot I of ways love. Everyone hates that's it. That's the thing. But it's that's so thing. sad. In, in a lot of ways, it's a very bad game. In a lot of ways, and <laughs> I'm when I tried to play, it, I'm a big fan of Just Cause Two. When I'm, I'm playing it, going, oh, this is very good, and then I, you know, you'll do a stream on it. And I'll be going, how the f you just you're having the great and yeah, you do it. And I'm like, you just you just find a I, I that is pure ADHD on the, like <laughs> it's pure and that but that lack of structure uh, in something like Elden Ring or even because I think every soul's like maybe not to the extent, but it has that lack of structure, right? It's just like here you are, fuck fuck it, I don't know. No, no, souls likes to tend to be go through this thing, but it will fall back on itself and you need to pay attention to the design. But that's but that's it, you it, it kind of points you in a direction, but that's really the only structure, right? I mean Dark um, Souls one, I'm pretty sure apart from like one or two places, is essentially just an open world game. Yeah. There's like one or two bits um, where you have to sort of like jump over a thing or have a cutscene to get over something but like apart from but that all of them are just like oh here you are you're this you, oh, i don't know you're a fo fallen or a downed or a blood blood boy or yeah, I don't tarnished give a or a bruised yeah or, and then it's cindered. like you i'm gonna say cindered, Ooh, cindered yeah you good. need to mm. do this and then, and then the cutscene ends and it's just fuck it i don't know go into the world and you'd speak to some guy and he's like my children got eaten by bees and i'm like okay <laughs> You know, and you go on, and that's and that's kind of it. And, and, and do you want me to do anything about it? No, I'm just here to set tone. Yeah, literally, and it's all about tone and and, and a kind of theme well, world. Building. He starts then doing a sponsorship for Honey if he talks to him too much. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, right? The the, the complete. I, I I get really frustrated because I like because like the re the reason my favorite games tend to be Bethesda games because I think they, they give you the open endedness but with quite a bit of structure if you want it but you don't need it um yeah but I think that the structure is you walk in a line until you find something that's what the structure of Elden Ring is like you li so what happens in Elden Ring is I you, don't you like do that, the though. tutorial which is linear you open up into that big open world and you go wow hey there's a guy on a horse down there okay he's turned me into marzipan let's do a 180 and go in the other fucking direction and you just kind of go like that through the whole but thing. The thing. But that's the problem. The things you find in a game like Elden Ring or in Elden Ring, most of the things you find, almost everything you find, is a thing that wants to murder you. I mean, and yeah, or it's a thing to murder people better with. Yeah. Well, and I will say the doubt, one of the problems I do have with Elden Ring is once you have decided that a particular direction is the way you want to play in a playthrough, 
approximately 60% of the loot you find becomes functionally useless because you just can't use it. Yeah, but that's so, just oh, money good. for levels. I do, oh, good. Another great big fucking high strength sword. I'm so glad it's the 80th high strength sword I have no interest in to yeah, add to the fucking pile. But I do think that that gives an element of shiny to everything. That when you do find something and you're like, oh, okay, I want to wield a big anchor for a while. There's an element of actually, you pick something up and you go, ah, oh, it's crap. You know, yeah, but you're not picking stuff up. Sometimes Elden Ring, you can spend like hours getting through <laughs> a really hard dungeon, figure out how to beat a really hard boss, and the reward is literally useless. Yeah, and that's and that, 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 that is the way I have a slight element of friction but that's with, the Elden thing, with Elden like, Ring. With Elden Ring. Like literally, if I get to a boss and he kills me like more than once, I will look up on the wiki what is the reward because I'm not going to waste two hours of my oh, life beating see, him for something no. I do not need. Bullshit. No, I beat everything. Everything that I come across, I've flattened into a pancake. Did you beat it? I've beaten the beast at the end of the Crystal Caverns. The What beast at the end of the Crystal Caverns? There's loads of Crystal Caverns. You know the Crystal Cavern you get teleported to at the beginning of the game if you open the trap chest? Yeah. There's a fucking... If you actually do, rather than just running out of that dungeon oh, to escape... Do you do you mean the Lava Boy or do you mean the Meteorite Boy? Meteorite boy. I did, but I beat him after I'd beaten the main meteorite boy in the big crater up north. I know, he's su- that fucking guy is such a twat. I hate him. <laughs> he's such a bastard. Yeah, I mean, I beat what's a face Melania Melania in the hidden area okay. in the hidden area in the hidden question. area. The weird thing is, I beat Melania phase one on my first attempt and I couldn't repeat the trick. <laughs> Here, look, here's my question, because everything I ever hear anyone talk about in Elden Ring is, I found this cool guy and I killed him and I got a sword that kills all the... Is there anything else? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's armor, but it's functionally all no, because, identical and doesn't matter. The, the, the thing I always like about Fallout, and even Skyrim to a certain extent, is, yeah, I can wander in the direction and find some, but the thing I find is like, oh my God, I'm a guy, and my wife's a ghost, and I'm like, oh no. And he's like, my wife's fucking spilling beans all over the town. You have to talk to the rest of the town and find out why she's spilling the beans. And I'm like, oh God, and you go and you find this trail of beans, you follow the beans around. Yeah, but and the that's resolution's just, usually just like, thanks. You know what that is? is? That's just mm. fuff. Absolute fuff around the exact same mechanic that I've got. You can probably just get a, fu- a weapon that's functionally useless or some scrap to sell. That's you know, not you're fuff. It's no, context. No, but I disagree. But Elden Ring my... does the context in gameplay. It doesn't make you sit and listen to no, some. No, but cut that's my whole on. point. That's you're my whole walking point. through this cave, and there might be an NPC there. Yeah, sure. But it might be like it's you know you you go under a thing and suddenly there's crystals everywhere, and then there's guys. You're like, oh, this is probably where they're mining these crystals from. Oh, this has got some magic texture to it. And the world is built around just the, where the things are placed. Like, oh, if you go underneath the bridge, there's loads of those big armoured heavy dudes and they're all dead and there's, like, no alive ones. And it's because they're alive on top of the fucking bridge. Well, and I think all... that's clever world building. It's more just that when you're saying it's all that fun. A lot of, I think, quests in Fallout and even Skyrim, a lot of them, you go through them and you get to the end and the guy's like, thanks. And then you leave and you're like, hang on, is that it? And the, you get nothing from them. Um, or sometimes you do, it's like, here's a wooden spoon. It's all I have. And I'm like, okay. I'm fine with it because to me, the that whole narrative and that whole thing is is the game to me. And everything else, I if anything, I find a lot of the combat to be fluff. And Elden Ring seems to just be all that. I, no, Elden I, Ring, I think, Elden Ring, the NPCs I can find a bit frustrating because ultimately they're all doomed and there's not much, there's nothing you can do about it fine that's part of like the the lore and the universe and the narrative that everyone's fucked but like if you go up to an npc in elden ring and they say here's my objective would you like to do this to help me and you do they end up dead or turned into a monster or otherwise they just die anyway like it actually feels like you trying to help people fucks them over and that might be part of the narrative and tell you about the dark decaying universe you live in how the universe is shit and you need to like change the inherent nature of the universe to fix it or something i find it frustrating Mm. that i find a character and there are so few of them but i eventually find a character who's like hey can you help me out and i do and the result is i get back and oh he's turned into a giant Sphere of heads oh, and I is loved now her. groaning in agony forever. I love so, her. All right, she great. Well, great. I'm, I'm glad I bothered helping you. <laughs> but it's not. It's the but that's the thing. But this. that's that is uh, that is a great story. That is one of my favorite stories in the game because that's a source. But it's the only story in the game. All the NPCs just fucking die. No, because her one specific is she wants to fight against the big witchy thing because she wants to take the the place. She wants to be basically sorcerer supreme. 
She's like, I'm going to go fuck this bitch up. Do you want to help? You're like, hell fucking yeah, I'll see you there. And by the time you get there, she's already dead. And you're like, no, I didn't want to help with that. Shut up. What? <laughs> and you just kind of slink away. And, you know, she's like, she's like, please help me. I'll be good. And then she's like, I'm going to... It's the it's the, the tree that turns into an evil horse in Witcher 3 that Rebecca always kills everybody because of. Um, it's that sort of... You probably should have just paid attention to what they were saying. If you complete is, I mean, the, the, quests, the one NPC that doesn't is is the really what's his name Kenneth Hort is it? Uh, no, Height. Kenneth Height, where he says, "Can you just go kill the people in my castle so we can have my castle back?" And you do, and he just goes and stands in his castle. It's like, all right, you know what? At the bare minimum, you're not dead. Um, just, so I'm gonna call John, this a massive win. John, in a recent patch, yeah. they added more stuff to Kenneth Height's uh, quest line. Oh, no, he don't. Okay, let me guess. Now he turns into a goblin. I don't know, because I don't look up wikis. I just go around and explore and have fun. But is, is The it's... Witcher 3 not the perfect balance of this? No. The Witcher 3 is heavy on cutscene and story. I like video games. No, New games. Vegas is the perfect balance of this, match. No, see, no, it... I, if you're making a video game, right, what you should focus on is the video game part. That's the, the the actual interactivity. This is the, this is why I really enjoy big sandboxes that are actually just fun to fuck around in and stuff. Because for me, that's actually that is the thing that this medium does better than anything else. A cutscene is just a small movie. No, you I know, don't like the cutscenes, but a cutscene is but incredibly linear gameplay, which is effectively just a cutscene which you are controlling, can still really elevate the narrative because no, something's much worse when you've done it yourself. Yeah, but to me, like in some like Fallout, like the ending of The Last of Us wouldn't work anywhere near as well if it was just a cutscene. But even then, it's an incredibly linear section where you can't do anything but no, what I, the cutscene would show, I, but, but it thing. works that's, because you're doing no, it. I disagree with that, John. That's where, for me, the illusion breaks. I really don't like The Last of Us because that ending, I'm like, well, I don't want to do the thing the character's doing. It's like, well, you, you have to. You can't opt out, so you just stop it. You're just like, well, I'm not going to... So it the takes, game. it's wrangling control from you because it's like, no, we're going to give you this narrative specifically. Because normally, like, you you and the, the, the character you're playing as should have similar, if not identical, goals. And in things like RPGs, they let you go off and do whatever the fuck you want, and that's kind of built in. Within limits. Within. There's always a limitation. Course, always no, but this is like, if we're talking about that, you, you know, something like Spec Ops The Line, where it, it, the whole point of that is it is structured like a normal military shooter, and you're just going along with it, because it's that's the kind of game, and then yeah. it challenges you on it after the fact. It, it gives you a false sense of security, and that then it goes, ha, fuck example. you. Yeah. There well, are the games where it pulls the, the bait and switch on you, and you, have, and you simply have to accept... I am now playing as a character who wants a different thing to what I do, but I cannot stop him because this character is determined to see this through, even though I know I am effectively causing the last of us, tragedy the last of by us doing isn't that. It. And that's what The Last of Us ending is. No, The Last of Us goes, oh, you want to save Ellie? And I'm like, I know. No, I don't. No, so we could save everyone then, else. I, at the start of that thing, I just put the controller down and I just sat and waited and see if this is doing way too up. And they're like, no. And I'm like, oh. It, it was such a tonal shift, and I'm like, you haven't bait and switched me. You've just railroaded me, and now it doesn't feel really I don't think it is railroad, because we know from the everything Joel said about his past, this guy used to be a raider. He is a mass murderer. He's done really awful, shitty things in the past, so much so that his family and friends walked away from him and set up their own communities, because he went too far in the past. Joel in his past, has been an absolute fucking nightmare fuel. He has been one of, you know, the raiders who are hostile to everyone by default in Fallout. That is his past. That's what yeah, he used to do. I can 100% game. believe that Joel got angry, decided he wanted to do something, and fucking murdered everyone no, in a hospital the, the problem with, is, that, with no way to stop in, him. In that context, I buy that. Of, no, I buy that the character, but, you know, in a game, you want the game to make you want to roleplay as the character, right? And throughout that entire game... At no point was it leading me in that direction. Like, narratively it was, but me as a player, it wasn't really pulling me into yeah, it Joel doing it that. It didn't sell it to you as the player. It yeah. failed to sell that idea to the player of this is the thing that you want to do. I d well, what you want to do is different to what the character wants to do. No, no, I, don't but, know. But, but, no, I, I look at saying. this like Greek tragedy. Like, there's no point in sitting in a play in the audience and saying, well, why does a teacher simply not murder anyone who's old enough to be his father and not have sex with anyone older than him? That would be the easiest solution. Because what a silly bastard. This is the thing. I don't I don't like we've, this Oedipus Tyrannus at all. We've got these but, like, other media. Part of it is part of the joy of stories is sometimes watching a character make a series of 
unforced errors generating tragedy. Sure, that's, but the, that's, that's, that's a whole entire story game. Structure. But games entire... give you control. It's a different medium, and I think that things where you are given control, like Elden Ring, you just like it's like fuck it, do whatever you want. That is a superior video game in every single way because it is a video game. It's not a film. It's it's doing what this medium does really well. This is why people love things like Fallout. But that's the thing, isn't it? Because the the Last of Us is written like a film or a TV yeah, show, which does not work. Yeah, because I mean, you it's can not do this to play. Play you into I the character. Like the I like the switch. I like no, that you feel I, John, like you've got freedom, but then you suddenly reach a moment where a plot thing happens and the freedom is taken away, and all of a sudden you realize, fuck, this character is now going to do this. Because that's what they're going yeah, but, to do, but, 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 and you just have to basically not just watch it, but be complicit. Yeah, but here's, in it. Look at Spec Ops Line, which is the great example. Because Spec Ops gives you moments where you are forced to do something horrific. One is mandatory at the start, but you don't even know that's really a thing that's going on. It's just that you'll just the only way to progress the game is to do it, and then all the other horrible things that you do are actually optional. And they'll give you certain options and things. And it's like, you have to choose, like, which of these two hanging people is killed by a sniper. I shot the sniper! Like, you know, and you're like, oh, that's a mate. Like, there's a crowd coming at you. And it's like, quick, you have to fire into the crowd. But if you fire above the crowd, they run away. And that worked. And it, it made me go, oh, well, I'm doing the right, I'm doing the good thing. And that, that led into a character getting a different ending. And it, it gave me, when it came to the final ending and I was given options... I was like, oh, this is an informed decision. I know where I'm, you know, where this character's going because we've built this thing up together. If I'd murdered everybody, I'd probably be like, oh, God, I'm a bastard, kill myself. But that's the thing, right? That game, while you have, like, because I, I agree with John to a certain extent. Yeah, a character, I think, obviously, to a certain extent, should do things differently to do. That's half the point of role playing. But the, the problem with The Last of Us is it, throughout that entire game, the character you're playing and the character you're the, the way the story is structured in the terms and the context of the gameplay is very much like you're a guy protecting this person to this end and it's trying to make and it it doesn't make you feel like joel enough to, I, to, to, and yeah and if you're trying to if the player disagrees suddenly flip them make them try and defend the stuff from john make them one of the little scientists doctor people that get slaughtered yeah there's a there's a way to do it that feels Natural, because I like the idea well, that it's kind of what Last of Us Two did. I think it, it didn't do it that effectively. Yeah, but Last of Us Two is shit. It's misery it's porn. Not, it's got shit. good and bad bits. It's, it's not the it's not the weird disaster bad. that people just made a large amount of clickbait about. It's a and it was just became the fashionable thing to say. It was the no. worst thing ever. It but, wasn't. It was. No. It did a lot of really interesting stuff. It just did it really it messily. Did no, no the, interesting the, stuff. The it Last of Us Two horrible. has most of the same problems as The Last of Us One, <laughs> and I don't like it for the same reason I didn't like The Last of Us One. Literally, that's it. And it does that thing of just, you know, you're just walking with nothing happening and the two characters are monologuing for like five minutes and then you go into a building and then there's a five minute cutscene, and yeah. you leave and then you get the two characters monologue for, and you're just, you're not doing it. You're watching it. Like in Fallout, yeah, a lot of times you're just talking to someone, but you, you, you are having to interact to make that thing happen. You're asking questions. You're investigating stuff. You're looking for clues. See, and it it, 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 just a point that uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 fails really hard in this after it you does, do that yeah. bank robbery because you're literally stuffed cash into your pockets you've got thousands and he's like well we're going to have to go and do some other crazy shit because we've got no money I'm like dude I could buy this country like yeah. I literally have so much fucking money on me right now and it never you're like the game make, gave me this money at the end like I now there's nothing else for me to buy I might as well just give this to you now the camp's done what else? I need... Why is the story still being told? Why are you not paying attention to the gameplay part? Yeah, they don't, they don't mix together because a lot of times games are often written by, like, writers who are trying to write films. <laughs> it, it really is, yeah. Or it's written like a film... Like, The Last of Us. I mean, they're talking about making it a TV show. I think that'd probably be a good TV show. I think it'd be a boring, probably... depressing, awful TV show. No, I, I think it'd watch. be boring, depressing, and awful, but structurally, it would work as a TV show. Actually, hang on. Isn't that on, <laughs> isn't that on HBO Max? It's probably not going to make it. <laughs> yeah, It's fine. probably not going to be made, even though they're filming it right now. You know, that doesn't change anything. Fuck it. Mm. That Batgirl news is legitimately the craziest thing to come at Hollywood in years, apart from, of course, The Flash himself. 
uh, who is insane. I just love how they can't make they can't make a Batman story for ninety million dollars. <laughs> well, they did make they it. They can't make That's a story about thing. a man who dresses up as Bat no. to stand on rooftop no. and occasionally no. drop into alley to beat up thugs. So well, it, we could need at least two hundred million dollars for that. It was girl who dressed up as a bat this time. Mm-hmm. That was the oh, difference. Oh, well, I see why they needed 120 but, but million. They were gone. They were it's basically an extra gone with 10 the million per extended bat boob panel. Yep. Don, you just you, you make a thing and you're done. You're like, nah. I mean, since the last part. Plus, it's fucking hilarious that the flash is still coming out. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. That's coming have out. They caught, have they captured the lead jet? No, he's just been done for another burglary, like gunpoint or some shit. Like, I, mean, I, 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 I tried to, I couldn't understand this. I read an article that seemed to imply that after he committed yet another crime, the police found him and told him to come to court in September, but left him free. Yeah. Say, so I feel like at some point you put him away where he can't hurt anybody else. I mean, the press no, he's tour white, for though, that. John. He's in America, so. The press tour for that show is going to be, that film is going to be fucking amazing. <laughs> he's going to murder one of the journalists. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah. well, that's it. That's it. They're going to choose to do all the fucking press tour in Hawaii specifically. They're going to make that choice. I do love that this is HBO, like is uh, the Warner Discovery horseshit has basically killed DC the same month that Marvel were like, here's phase five and six. Fuck you. And um, I also find it hilarious that they also decided to announce this last week. What was it? Basically, they've now got this new MCU inspired 10 year plan. It's like you've just spent most of a decade making some absolute messes of continuity. And on the other hand, you kind of set up, you know, like the Batman and Joker, where you weren't fussed with it making a big MC universe. And they made a fuck ton of money and yeah. were really successful with critics and audiences. Like, the Joker is in the top 35 highest grossing films of all fucking time. You've got those. And you I think, you know what we're going to no do budget. now? We're going to go back and try again with the MCU-inspired 10-year plan bullshit. Yeah. Literally, their whole advantage is that they can do single-shot, more sort of creatively-focused movies with single directors that are in their own world, yeah. that have their own very distinct style, and they work. And, and if they just did that... That is their <laughs> only yeah, option. Why on earth would you look at your recent output thinking we've got the Batman and Joker on one side and we've got the DCU mess on the other side? Yeah, more of the DCEU mess. Let's come up with a 10-year MCU-inspired plan. Yeah. But that's the thing. That's like, the way to do it. Because, I mean, a lot of people talking about having superhero fatigue and all that sort of stuff. And they're like, oh, I've seen I enough of this shit. And, you know, fair enough. Um, but th- now is not the time to launch into 10 years of films. No. People are going to be like... I think uh, fatigue is starting to creep in for some people. It was, oh, but I think that's what, that's what made, I think, the Batman and Joker quite interesting because... The Batman came out and went, hey, I'm a David Fincher film. And I'm like, well, no. you yeah, because I like the MCU. I like the MCU films, but let's be honest. They kind of say me in a lot of ways. And the Batman came out and went, it's like everything's dark and wet. And I'm just going to do detective <laughs> and be an emo for three hours straight. And there's one action scene in the entire film. And that's it. And I'm like, it's doing its own thing. I didn't feel fatigued by that film because it was doing something different. The Joker, as much as I was fine with the film, hate the fan base as a film, was doing its own thing. It went... The fucking, you the just guy... love it because it was filmed in Liverpool. Which one? The Batman? Yeah. Yeah. Admittedly, I do have a picture of him jumping off the clock tower. But, You're biased. But <laughs> the Joker... I mean, what? The, the directors went, I want to make Taxi Driver and the, and the fucking... G- comedian? The entertainer? Which one? Yeah, one of them. Whatever. I want to make those two films, but with the Joker. And they did. And it was its own very visual auteur thing where... How, how valid it is. And they were great. Yeah. And they did their own thing. And I didn't have superhero fatigue from them because they were doing something so different. It wasn't this big CGI Marvel fest. It was man in leather, in, in a leather cape, looks around dark rooms for three hours and is sad. Yeah. I mean, even if they're trying to duplicate the MCU, the guy who's running it, whoever his name is, he's got like, oh, well, we want all the DC films to feel like they're big theatrical things. No more TV and no more streaming. And I'm like... Are you really saying that after Marvel has knocked it out of the park time and time again with its television shows? 
Like the 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 last couple of years when we've had like fucking WandaVision and Loki and Hawkeye and what was the one we just had? Ms. Marvel, ah, I think that was a great first episode, it kinda of went downhill. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Really enjoyed the the fun you know, teenage stuff in the first couple of episodes that it just I like yeah. the uh, I like the Fallout Three General Autumn ending. Where she went, Don't do it and the villain went Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the main villain was, co- how the main threat was completely sorted out in episode five, and then there was just another episode where there was. I like the a, fact that she met like. She added a new threat. She met like a guy, and he was like, Oh, I'm actually part of a secret society that does this thing. And she's like, Oh, shit. And then they just do that exact plot again an episode later, where she meets yeah. another guy, and he's from a secret society, and you're like, uh, Okay. So, she just keeps going around the world and meeting more hunky, hunky boys. I am looking forward to She-Hulk. I must admit, that's a few. That's not that far away. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be to to be fun and horny, which it She-Hulk should be. Does it's also been heavily inspired by Fleabag, which oh. is that's something that you always will excite me. I mean, the American take of Fleabag, it's not going to be as good as Fleabag, but it does have a giant green lady in it, so I'm in. There is, admittedly, it, there's something I'm a little worried about with Marvel, and it's something I'm hoping that sort of changing. I mean, it. It was noted in some of the films in that they'll get a director in with a very specific style and then won't give them quite enough creative control. I think that's gone. I think that was a big deal with Ant-Man because it's made Edgar Wright walked away from it um, because they really were trying to push for certain things. No, but but even then... After Taika Waititi is Ragnarok really made them go all right we'll give we'll give no, lots of face it's Chloe, getting whatever better. Doctor Strange 2 you absolutely cannot in any way think that's anybody else's film oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but there's a key point in all of these films Dude, Doctor Strange 2 that, is so much fun that film is they, cool. it's so fun <laughs> they still get a separate team to film all the action scenes mm. they still get separate teams to film all the CGI heavy elements and they don't let the director be involved with those. And the director, Tiger Batiti, really insisted on doing rewrites to the script. And I'm assuming, I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming for, for Doctor Strange 2, a lot of rewrites are done as well. But they don't write the script yeah. either. Marvel keep it really tightly controlled. And I'm worried that that tight control might be its downfall in the end. It's not yet, but I'm worried it's moving in that direction. And if they don't pull back, I'm worried I, everything's no, just going to come down into nothing. I think they're nothing. getting weird with it. And I think that's fun. I think yeah. we've seen... I hope they keep doing that. Yeah, I think, you know, stuff like Loki and WandaVision was so out there and weird. Like, their TV was like, let's get weird with it. And then Spider-Man was amazing. No, but, no, but, y- y- something like WandaVision. That, y- but I think so- you can only do Spider-Man so many times. I think if you had a big thing and like Spider-Man like every few months, I'd get tired of it you pretty saw fast. The, the problem in Wanda- you saw the problem in WandaVision, I think. Because WandaVision, you could see that in those first b- bunch of episodes, really, really locked in. Right, yeah. and you got to those last two episodes, and then a different director took over the action scene. Went, we have to end it with a, a CGI fight. I must admit, though, the, that final episode—if you go straight from that final episode into Multiverse of Madness, it's, it works so well, and you can see how well connected they are. Yeah, plus feels... I think the CGI fights in the finale of WandaVision are kind of a fake out because sure they all toss lasers and balls to each other, but actually the way the conflicts are resolved is. One, philosophical debate, and two, an academic principle that Wanda learned in a previous episode. Yeah, that's my point, you No one actually wins because they were the better at throwing lasers at the other. Yeah. It's it's all it's basically all determined by philosophy and learning. No, I wonder and definitely progress. doesn't win. Like her whole arc ends like her good person arc ends in that thing, and they don't roll it back and make her save everybody. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. You know, you watch Mighty Vs. Man, you're like, oh shit, they're really. T- I think Monica's a bit generous to her at the very end before well, my, she flies off. Yeah. My whole point. I mean, Monica's probably saying, hey, could you answer some questions <laughs> from the, like, you know, sword before you go? Because, like, I appreciate you've had a bad few weeks, but so have a lot of other people <laughs> because of you. We'd but like this... to ask you some questions. But this is my point, though. Like, they could have at least have tried to arrest her. They could have done all that philosophical debate and all that things without the big action scenes. No, but but... Not that I think that the action scenes were necessarily bad. It's more that Marvel put those action scenes in because they felt they had to have it, not because it was narratively important to the story. Oh, mm. well, I disagree. Because they And they do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing in the Marvel Studios in that they require these action scenes in films even if the actual writers and directors don't really want them. I disagree um, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. 
Um, thing again, Loki didn't end on a big CGI fight. It ended on literally an, almost a monologue from fucking Kang, which well, was. I'm not saying it happens all the time. It, 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 you can which just was see... entirely, I think, so, sold by the fact everyone in the room was very, very good at acting. Yeah, no, that was the thing. Like that well, episode was like, you're just like, shit. This is just like an advert for their Thanos for this, like these next few things. That's so good. It's so much fun. Uh, Loki's really good. Um, Loki is really good. Hawkeye ended on a bit of a big fight, but it kind of had to because he pissed off a load of gangsters. In his, I'm not saying I'm not saying the big fights are necessarily a problem. It's more that Marvel do, irregardless of whether it fits or not, is my point. They will require it. Notably, I mean, Black, Black Panther is probably a really, really bad example, a good example of it. Well, what about uh, Doctor that Strange? Final fight. Doctor Strange doesn't really have a final fight. It's got that final clever little Dormammu. I, 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 I think it's possibly Morgan. my favourite resolution to any Marvel film, Doctor Strange yeah. one. I love that resolution. Just to be so clear, clever. when I when I say big CGI, I, I don't mean there's necessarily a big CGI fight. It's not It's not a rule. I just, well, I'm just the, using it as the, an example. Yeah, but it's the, conf- it's the end of the conflict, isn't it? It's the final showdown. You kind of do need to have. No, I'm saying a lot of a lot of ones. Plus, a big CGI fight can be fun if it's visually interesting, which most of Doctor Strange is. No, it's all I, got the weird no, fucking no, mirror no, dimension, you, you, everything sorry. swirling around shit going uh, yeah, on. Yeah, misunderstood my point slightly. Is my point isn't that the CGI facts are bad. It's that Marvel will require them, I even if the no, actual saying, creators don't want them. But and I'm that saying is that's, well documented. No, I'm saying that's bullshit. Now I think they've moved on from that. I don't think we have these big final fight scenes. I mean, look at how much... Again, clearly, I'm not talking about final fights. I'm just using that as an example for really, specific CGI How sections. much influence the director had on the finale of uh, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. And the big fight... Yeah, there's no way in how Sam Raimi didn't get to do quite a I mean, few yeah, tweets to that like script to make it did. what he wants. That's just Taika Waititi. Yeah, no, 100%. It's gotten better. You're like, we saw the worst of it during that era of Captain Marvel and Black Panther, right? Yeah, Where, no, like, I agree. I think, yeah, they, the first one was like experimental. And then they're like, oh, this is popular. we got to lock it down. And then the third phase was like, actually, let's get weird with it. The fourth phase is let's get really fucking weird with it. The fifth phase is whatever the fuck that's going to be. And the sixth phase is just fucking two Avengers films at the moment. Which is only, what, six months apart from each other? That's pretty weird. fucking rad. Which is rad. fine. Infinity War and Endgame were pretty close to each other. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, God, I'm so excited. I really am. I love that shit. I like, I I just like, hope I'm reading comics I... at the moment. That's what I'm doing. I'm reading Marvel just... comics. The first I just time hope ever. they don't overstructure They've it. Got you. They got me, baby. They got me. I've read all the of Cross Soldier. All of oh, I've got Marvel Unlimited, Marvel Unlimited. What's it called? Marvel Unlimited. I think it's Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, so. um, yeah. The the comic book app thing where it's like six pound a month or something, and you get to read all fucking thirty thousand Marvel comics. And I'm like, yep, let's read it all. Let's read everything. Yeah, they got me. Well, that's the, but that's the thing though, because I when I got my tablet, I read a lot of comics as well, and one of the things I found particularly interesting was when you look at Marvel versus DC, DC especially for Batman. They do a load of one shots. They just do it is a graphic novel of Batman, which is not related to anything else. It's by some specific author. Yeah. And it's just this one shot thing. It doesn't tie into anything else. And DC have done that fucking loads. And Marvel have done that a bit as well. I just hope that I hope that DC stick to the strengths of doing interesting one shots with their very distinctive but very simple characters. Yeah. And that Marvel make the big world thing, but they don't overdo it. I'm worried they'll overdo it because they have overdone it in the past. I don't... It's Disney. I can... You know what? <laughs> it's got, it has to end at some point. I'd rather they ended it with some ridiculous big jumping the shark moment than it just fizzling out. I want a spectacular... I'd rather it all ended with a spectacular failure. A massive overreach. <laughs> Do it. Do it. I want the most... I want I want huge... I want Galaxy Shark to swim up to Earth and all the Avengers to jump into their Avengers mobile and literally ramp over And him. the film should because have cost a billion dollars. Weakness. That's I how want... I want the MCU to end. They need the first billion dollar film and it needs to be a horrible film. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm into that. I, that would be great. Like Robert Downey Jr. comes back for it, you know. Yeah. He's like, yeah. oh, guys, I wasn't but, dead at all. But <laughs> he's playing his character from Tropic Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no explanation. And also his character from Satan's Alley yeah, with Tobey Maguire yeah. also showing up as and then, his character in and Satan's there's this, Alley. There's this big, like, drum roll, this big reveal, and the fucking, like, a door opens and fucking Keanu Reeves as Constantine walks out, and everyone's like, oh, my God, Constantine, our favourite guy. <laughs> 
You know, and they reveal that actually they'd kept it secret this whole time, but they've bought DC, Superman, and Batman show up. I mean, I would say I do think we're gonna see DC going on the market pretty soon. Mm. I think we may be. I would be unsurprised if within the next couple of years we see a headline that says Disney have bought DC. I think they'd get blocked. Do you? What, like a monopoly? A, could, oh, they're yeah, all no, 100% to stop that would, this. Yes. That would get blocked because that is a act. That's a proper monopoly. That's not like, oh, Disney has a monopoly on entertainment. It's not even that. Like, mm. DC and Marvel basically account for 99% of all comics. Um, and I'm, owning... I'm so divided on it because on the one hand, it would be very bad for the industry, competition, monopolies, etc. But on the other hand, I'd quite like a DC versus Marvel, like Avengers versus the Justice League I mean, as yeah. the biggest film in the history of the world ever. That, that's that's how I want it. it to finish. That is how Dep- I want it to finish. I want to have that. Depending on who and has the And after that, license. there's no point making any other superhero movies ever nah, again. Have them it's all done. die. Okay. They just all die. <laughs> And, and one one superhero, like one, like Black Bolt survives. Like just no, just, yeah, Black no. Bolt. I want at the I want Ant Man. No, Ant Man survives. Nick Cage's He's the only Ghost survivor. Rider. Nick Cage's Ghost Rider comes up and finishes the film by doing his fire piss thing from Ghost Rider. The two. only survivor of the MCU is Paul Rudd, who just bumbles around doing Paul Rudd things. That's it. That's the end. <laughs> no, you see, yeah, it's very Kirby, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I could actually. Yeah, fuck it. I'll take that. I'll be fine, but I, I, ju- I just... I kind of want Disney to own everything, so it just basically becomes like that multiverses game. Like, the it's like fucking... You've got Iron Man versus Bugs Bunny versus Goku, and it's just... You're like, yeah, fuck it. Just oh, That's where we're heading. I, you know, that's, I think that's just Ready Player One. I'm thinking about it. It's I mean, possible. What? Right, I'm afraid I have to ask you guys for your final thoughts, because I have to go and do the exciting thing oh, of a guy coming to fix my oven. Oh, oh is that euphemism for something? Yeah, precisely. I'm going to go to my random word generator and give you a random random word. Okay, well, give, oh, give right. us a random word to wrap up this episode of the podcast. Song. Are you ready? This is going to be another. The random word is mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> and on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's trust uh, nine we, times we, eight. All right. All four, four, one. And one for all. Was that trying to be mathematics by just saying a number? Yeah, there was there was like a one and a four in it. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't even see the one. Wow. I know. Oh, wait, I, wait, that. wait! I'll do one, seven, three, four, six, seven, three, two, one, four, seven, six, Charlie, three, two, seven, eight, nine, seven, 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 six, four, three, times seven, three, two, seven, three, one, one, seven, eight, 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 seven, three, two, four, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, six, four, three, seven, six. I can still do it. I did it. Why were you masturbating was, while doing that? Was though? that pie? No, no, that was, was that, that was the fifty-two pie? digit. That was the 52-digit password that data uh, input into the enterprise computer. Oh, I missed the beginning and I assumed you were doing pi. No. Matt, do pi. Charlie. I don't know pi. Do as many things. 3.141529, isn't it? No. I don't know. I I know the first. (laughs) I know it's a two decimal places. I don't give a fuck. But Star Trek numbers, boy. (laughs) Well done. Oh, two-point campus is good. That's all I've got. That's gaming thoughts. Sorry, is that where you're ending the podcast on? It's just two point campus. Two point campus, campus okay, is good. Pokemon are more edible than they should be. Square Enix doesn't make video games anymore. Night Soldier Republic is dead. Good night, everybody. Bye. Don stood up. He's, he's leaving to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>